Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming you all from Mirpur Shere Bangla National Cricket Stadium in Dhaka to the exhilarating class between Bangladesh and Australia women in the second one day international of the three match series we have. This is Shazad Udas from the Combox welcoming you all and it's a cloudy day here with some heavy rainfall overnight but thanks to the amazing ground staff here we have a game on time. With Australia leading the series already 1-0 and the world champions will look to win here again today and back the series. On the other hand, Bangladesh will be looking to bounce back and to win today to keep themsel themselves alive in the series. So firstly, let's go to Shanu Rabbani and find out what the pitch does have to offer today. Hello and welcome. It's time for the pitch report of the second one international between Bangladesh and Australia women. Now, in the first match, we saw a low scoring affair but Australia still came out big time winners. Australia, they started off slow. It was uh, pretty gloomy conditions, difficult to bat on, but they eventually managed to put up over 200, which is an over par total on this surface. Now, I'm talking about a surface that was used in the first match, and this is a surface, this is a fresh new surface that's being used for the second match, and this is surface number nine. Now, what we see here is that unlike the first surface, which had a bit less green and it was a bit lighter colored, this is a bit darker, this is a bit greener, but this surface doesn't have any cracks in it. I really can't see any, any sort of big sort of cracks appearing, which we saw in the first match. Now, what sort of total can we expect? I think uh, if a team bats well, something around 200 would be good. Batting first, teams have won four games. Batting second, teams have won eight games. And if you look at it, if you look at the surface, I think given there was overnight rain and there's still a bit of cloud covering, it might be a surface where you decide to win the toss and bowl first. However, let's see what the captains decide at the toss. So, Shanu Rabbani, that was, ladies and gentlemen, for you with the pitch report. And now, it's time for the toss. Shaman Naghosh is out there with the two captains. All set for the second ODI here at the Mirpur Shere Bangla National Cricket Stadium. Uh, all set for the toss, of course. Uh, match referee, Nemo Rashid Rahul, Alisa Healy, the Australian captain, and Nigar Sultana Jyoti, the Bangladesh captain, who's going to toss the coin. Tails is the call. Tails is the call, and it is ahead. All right, so Bangladesh uh, have won the toss and decided to... Bat first. Reasons being... I think uh, we wanted to give our batting unit a um, little bit more luxury that they can take time and uh, do their preparation. Mm -hmm. So you want to give them a chance, of course. Uh, in terms of the wicket, uh, this is pitch number nine today. Uh, any differences you noticed? I think it's a pretty good wicket. Uh, seeing it's hard, and uh, I think the main reason is I don't want to give our batters to any pressure. So we wanted to put some score in the scoreboard. So how looking forward for that? And as far as putting some score is concerned, what are you looking at? Obviously, uh, 220 uh, plus or 20 to, to be a good score for, for us because how our bowler is bowling, I think uh, if we could at least uh, achieve 200 plus runs, it would be a nice score. And uh, any changes to the side? No, we are going with the same 11. Same 11. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Alisa, firstly, happy birthday. <laughs> I hope it's a good one for you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, not won the toss. Uh, would you have done the same? Uh, not too fast to be honest. To be honest, I think probably we would have looked to bat, but um, I actually wasn't too fast having a ball first. I think if we're going to get anything out of the surface, it's with the new ball early this morning, so it's not such a bad result. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as you've looked at it, I know you've looked at that one and played on that one. Uh, do you see make any difference out of it? 
pretty similar. I think this one's actually a little bit drier from, from my eyesight and, and my looking at it. So it actually, um, I don't think will be, it could play a little bit better. That's my gut feel. I think that one was a little bit tacky the other day and did quite a lot with, um, with the hard ball. So we'll wait and see how this one plays. 220 around that would be a good score? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think if we were batting first, we're still looking to put up over 250 on the board no matter the conditions. So it's just about adapting to them and, and finding a way to score. So this morning we'll just um, try and make inroads as, as best we can with the new ball and, and try and restrict them to something we can get. And as far as the side is concerned? Uh, one change. We've got Sophie Molyneux coming back in for Kim Garth today. All right. Wish you all the best. Cheers. Thank you. So the news from the middle is that Bangladesh have won the toss yet again, but this time they're going to have a bat first. For the pitch report. So, what do you think? You thought the captain winning the toss would be bowling first, but Mega has some other ideas. Yeah, I think uh, even in the last match, she did exactly the opposite of what I thought might be the way to go. Uh, we saw that in the result, but uh, perhaps what she wants is her batters to gain a bit of confidence. They were bundled out for less than 100 in the first match. So, with all things considered, perhaps uh, batting first isn't. Such a bad decision. The sun is out. It's less overcast than it was in the first match. But we had some heavy rainfall overnight. And uh, do you think that would help the bowlers initially at least for the first 5 to 10 overs? What do you think about that? And uh, we have the team 11s. Uh, and as we see that Bangladesh is uh, absolutely unchanged. Nigar Sultana Jyoti, Fahima Khatun, Farjana Hokpinki, Marufa Akhtar, Murshida Khatun, Nahida Akhtar, Rabia Khan, Ritu Moni, Shobhana Mustari, Shorna Akhtar and Sultana Khatun. And Australia, uh, we can see there is one change. Yeah, Sophie Molyneux, uh, she is coming in. Kim Garth has been replaced, uh, left arm off spinner. So we know how Bangladesh likes left arm off spinners, plenty of left arm off spin in uh, the men's team as well. We know that. So perhaps it's a good decision. Australia, they've got the leg spin of uh, Lana King as well. So they've got a very, very balanced bowling attack. Yeah, but, uh, but in the first game, we saw that uh, Bangladesh, they had But finally, they managed to score 200 plus, and that uh, proved to be enough uh, for the win. So, a couple of things about this ground. Obviously, when you bat first, teams that have batted first, as I said in the uh, pitch report, they've won four out of the 14 ODIs. There have been 12 results, and two have ended in ties, interestingly. If you look at the uh, highest score that Bangladesh scored, it, that was 225 last year, was uh, against India in the last One Day International. And 200 plus has only been scored five times. While chasing, uh, it has been scored only once. So that was India where they tied the match. In the last 12 months, uh, some of the top scorers for Bangladesh Farzana Hakpinki with an average of 41. She scored 200s, the only centurion in the team. 460 runs. Nigar Sultana Jyoti, 269. The captain, she's in the second in the list with an average of 26. And she's also got a 50. As we see the umpires, they're making their way. Yes, and uh, hopefully for Bangladesh's sake, that Farzana Hak, she will get and start and will be capitalizing on that. She got out very cheaply in the very first over in the previous game. And of course, Bangladesh uh, top order will rely heavily on her. The top order definitely will rely on her, as I said, uh, you know. But you look at the Australian team and in the last five years, Australia have, and this is a massive, massive number. They've lost only four out of 48 games. Four out of 48 this Australia team have lost 
in the last five years. There's a reason they're the champions and uh, they play like the champions on the field. And as we can see that the batters and all the fielding team, they're out there. Uh, definitely, we will be looking forward to a bright sunny day. And uh, of course, Bangladesh supporters will hoping for a better performance with the bat and ball. Uh, nothing much uh, they did wrong with the ball in the first game apart from some uh, a few misses, a few catch drops. Uh, uh, but the bowlers were uh, all right in the first game, but the batters, they really disappointed. Well, I'd say even with the bowling, Bangladesh had Australia at 147 for 7. Uh, and uh, from there, you expect most teams to be bowled out for less than 200. Australia went on to score 200 plus runs in the end. And one of the key differentiators was obviously Alana King's innings. But I also feel the Bangladesh captain, Nigar Sultana Jyoti, she decided to not use the one pacer that she had. And Marufa, she was bowling very well early on in the innings. We saw her getting swing, the ball to move both ways. But she wasn't used at all in the death overs. And the last over, we know how expensive it was. So that probably was an area where Bangladesh will look to rectify upon. Absolutely. That game-changing over. So here we are with the first ball of the match. Right on the money. And uh, defended softly to the backward point and uh, we were talking about the last over four sixes were hit in the last over in the previous game yeah an unfortunate record is uh, Fahima bowled the most expensive over in ODIs in uh, women's ODIs in, in the last match Australia operating with a slip oh that was a brilliant delivery of course the better she wanted to fish just outside the off stump and uh, currently the bowler is operating from the media end and the square boundary from the better side is the shortest one only 63 meters and she looked to target that offside area but as you can see there's swing on offer once again defended with softer hands Bangladesh yet to get off the mark and uh, of course they will be looking forward to score uh, about 200 to 25 to make a match out of it absolutely that would be a massive massive score if they can get that uh, i'm not sure given megan shoot again you see what she's good at she's very good with the in swinger she's also got a very useful leg cutter so for the Bangladesh openers, Farzana and Mustari, they'll need to be wary of the early swing and negotiate it and then look to play their shots. Farzana Hawk thinking yet to get off the mark in this series. She got out without scoring a run. So that's the first runs for Bangladesh in this match. No, of course they wanted the second one, but wasn't on offer and wide signaled so no runs still for Farzana Hawk in this series in the last game the number of wides was uh, pretty high for Australia over 20 extras they gave so that's an area that they look to improve upon and one word that uh, the Australians keep using in press conferences given the pitch and conditions is extreme so yeah, they're uh, new to these conditions. They're having to deal with it. Absolutely. Extreme is the word, especially from the Australians from that part of the world coming to the subcontinent with the hot weather, the humid weather. And uh, they will face the same music today. The last delivery we saw once again, a bit of inward movement off the pitch oh, there's an appeal but I don't think the umpire is gonna entertain that so end of the first over Bangladesh 2 for no loss
तो बांग्लादेश टू फॉर नो लॉस आफ्टर द फर्स्ट ओवर एलिस फेरी शी विल शेयर द न्यू बॉल एंड फॉर हर वी कैन सी ए स्लीप एंड द गली इन प्लेस सो ऑस्ट्रेलिया ऑन द अटैक एंड व्हाई नॉट दे नो दैट फॉर जना हॉकिंकी इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट विकेट फॉर बांग्लादेश एंड दे विल वांट टू सेंड हिम सेंड हर बैक वंस अगेन अनदर वाइड डाउन द लेग साइड so that's a, that will be an interesting contest uh, against uh, between perry and uh, farzana the prime batter if we see at the if we look at the bangladesh lineup and uh, farzana would love to score some runs against this uh, fantastic all rounder from australia yeah at least perry she became the highest capped odi player in uh, cricket history oh now is that an opportunity just just over still no boundaries but two more runs added to the total as i was saying uh, you know with elise perry you talk about the generational players i think uh, that is the definition of what elise perry is and uh, she's not just good in cricket she's <laughs> represented australian football as well in a world cup and you look at her, her numbers with the bat she's uh, she's got an average of over 60 in tests 49 in ODIs and 31 in T20s and you know those are some staggering numbers absolutely absolutely and bangladesh uh, will try to see her off of course she is opening the bowling today but that wasn't the case in the first ODI she bowled four overs considered only 5 runs and came as the sixth bowler in that game so different story today for australia oh that was beautifully bowled beautifully bowled kim gurt was the other bowler sharing the new ball in the first game she took two wickets for 26 runs but she is not part of the 11 today that just goes to show the amount of options the australia team have and we call them one of the greatest cricket teams of all time they've got 11 batters and almost 11 bowlers it seems that was aged of course the batters will cross for some runs single on that occasion but that was played really really dangerously from the batter farzana hawk on that occasion was lucky enough to fetch the gap between the slip and gully yeah, they're uh, trying to get the opening batters to drive we saw in the first over as well mostly outside the off stump and on that occasion the edge was in use there is a plenty of movement off the pitch and through the air for both these opening bowlers for Australia and we were talking about Ellis Perry's batting numbers or bowling numbers you know she's got over 100 wickets in ODIs and T20 internationals and uh, at very good averages in T20s her average is uh, just over 18 in ODIs it's just over 25 again you see some away swing but this time the umpire will signal a wide It's good to see Australia on the attack because when Shobana she came on strike they strengthened the slip quadrant added one more fielder now it's two slip and a gully and the gully is pretty close to the second slip so they are trying to induce the batter an outside edge trap outside of stump and they're trying to bowl with that line Yeah, absolutely the trap is in place and we've already seen a couple of uh, edges being induced for the opening batters it's just about trying to survive bat out the conditions and then see 
where you can go from there. Again, some away swing. Excellent bowling by Elise Perry. Seven without loss after two. Oh, again, you see that inward movement. Again, another wide. Two very different kind of bowlers on operation here. Where we can see Megan Shoot, she is trying to bowl some in swingers early on towards the right handers. Where Perry, she was moving the ball outwards. Again, you see that in swinger from her. He's got a beautiful action. Bangladesh, as I was saying, they look to try and uh, survive, see off the uh, new ball, the swing, and then see where they can go from um, that position. It's certainly not easy for the opening batters. For Zana Hukpinki, she got out facing Megan Short in the first game, in the very first over. And uh, she bowled very miserly in that game, considering less than run on over. Only five runs from six overs she bowled. And the line he is bowling today we can see why there is only one slip for her and when Perry is operating from the other end she had two slips and a gully yeah, they've gone with a pretty aggressive field early on in the power play overs despite just having one slip you can see all these closing field positions on the V so that tells you that uh, they're trying to get the batters to drive a bit more especially with the swing Bangladesh will be decently pleased that they haven't lost any wickets early on well Australia will be looking forward to that picking up wickets still early overs only the third over in operation a very interesting field setup uh, when Megan Shute is operating from this media end three on the on side three on the off side within the circle a typical field placement in terms of ODI games again you see the batter this time Farzana trying to play a bigger shot not getting the timing right but after three it's uh, eight without wicket for Bangladesh The two pacers in operation early on here in the second ODI. Subhana Mustari on strike yet to get off the mark. Perry, she continues. Better looking drive. No run on that occasion. I Perry think overtook Alex Blackwell, became the highest capped Australia ODI player in the last match. Well, there are tons of experience from her side. And of course, 
these Bangladeshi players. They didn't have much opportunities to face this Australian team. Only the third ODI they are playing against the Australians. And before this series, they played only one. So they would love to make this opportunity count. They'd love to display some better cricket. Of course, better from the first ODI. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, since Australia are bowling right now, it's uh, important to mention that they've got Ash Gardner and uh, Alana King still to come and bowl. Oh, now that's driven, but to the fielder, it was there to be hit. A good fielding there. And Ash Gardner, she's taken 26 wickets in the last 12 months. Alana King just behind her with 21. And they will be uh, getting an opportunity to bowl at these uh, batters. But that really should have been put away by Subhana Mustari. The last delivery it was a full toss outside off stump. Unfortunate for her, it went straight to the fielder. Absolutely, she'd be very disappointed with that not picking the boundary on offer. Once again down the leg side, Alice Perry trying to mix things up, bowling on a fuller length, but missing the line on the occasion. Yeah, Shazad, do you think it's a bit of a, a defensive tactic by the uh, Bangladesh captain to not bat in the first match in the first innings and now trying to bat to just get the batters in form as uh, Perry comes on. Again, good delivery. Well, the statistics say that the batting second team, the team batting second, always have an advantage on this ground. And uh, of course, Bangladesh uh, did start very well with the ball in the first game. Unfortunately, they couldn't capitalize fully on that start. And of course, their battered fa batters failed. But today, uh, that's a good shot. But I don't think it it will roll over for a boundary. But two runs, nevertheless. And of course, Shobana, she is off the mark. So as I was saying that today, also I thought that she will love to bowl first, having won the toss. But uh, of course, uh, after that, disappointing batting display she wanted her batters to bat freely so that's a strategy and you might say it's a defensive strategy but you never know on this ground uh, if you have runs on the board it might get tricky to chase later on well defended in the end after four bangladesh 11 without loss Speaking of uh, Bangladesh and batting first, uh, Shahjad, Bangladesh's highest score in this ground was when they decided to bat first. It happened last year against India. Scored 225 and uh, who can forget that century by the opener Farzana Hokpinki. Absolutely, bowling is their strength and they uh, wanted to play to their strength. Put some runs on board and try to defend that. It won't be very easy against these Australians. And uh, a rather sedate start for Bangladesh to this innings. Oh! Now the appeal is there, but the umpire remains unmoved. That looked very close. Well, Farjana, she tried to pull that out of Mirpur but couldn't connect it will be a very interesting replay to see but I think it's a very good decision from the umpire yes of course we can see why the fielders were excited 
but it it didn't i i don't think it did hit the bat or gloves on the way to the keeper brilliant decision from the umpire well negotiated this time by farzana you see that uh, in swinging delivery again by megan shoot and that was a surprise delivery in fact even for the batter because uh, she's been getting a lot of in swinging fuller length deliveries or length deliveries and then all of a sudden the bum bumper comes up and uh, you want to be able to put that away you want to free your arms a bit again you see a very different line a very different length from Megan shoot not anything short Vrindarati downfield umpire a former Indian cricketer a rather small cricket carrier but now she is officiating this game and uh, Megan shoot I think with each ball Bangladeshi openers are surviving it will add to the frustration of the Australians because they would they would thought that they will have that similar start to the first ODI pulled away but couldn't pierce the gap and uh, five overs gone Bangladesh Megan shoot with that made in Bangladesh 11 for no loss So Bangladesh have survived five overs without losing any wickets and there have been a few edgy moments but in the end all's well that ends well so far it started well for the Tigers as the hosts they will look to put up a better show with the bat from the first ODI where they lost by over a hundred runs and couldn't score a hundred plus themselves Elise Perry in her first two overs she's conceded eight continuing with her third and some swing on offer well negotiated by Subhana Mustari they've been uh, solid so far outside the off stump there have been a few struggles for both these opening batters Mustari and the Farzana Hawk but uh, they haven't gotten bat and ball to any outside edges that have fallen into a fielder three slips in place yeah they struggled when there was an outswinger on offer it was driven but once again couldn't pierce the gap but with each passing moment both these batters they are looking comfortable of course uh, both are operating pretty slow at this moment but they will they will know that there will be uh, some opportunities to score some runs if they get set something to take in mind and I feel from the first one international is the outfield it's a bit slower again the bumper this time by Elise Perry and it's called another wide so probably the top scorer in this innings is the number of extras because seven wides so seven out of the twelve runs have been uh, extras Megan shoot with uh, two and Elise Perry now with four wides they look to put a lid on things early on there is some swing probably a bit more difficult to control the new ball and in search of wickets they are trying things they're trying the one bouncer per over the rest is more regulation stuff Oh, that came back sharply onto the body, but a single picked up 
will be interesting to see if there's any signal from the umpire no it's runs of the bat so moving on Farzana and rotating the strike is very important Shanur uh, you cannot be so defensive uh, that you can play only dot balls and if you do that uh, there will be some opportunities and there will be some missed opportunities as well if you go to that defensive frame of mind absolutely but they are hanging on and that's what's most important as the sun once again comes out it's a bit hotter today I wouldn't say humid but it is hotter in the first ODI we had a massive chance of rain in the morning and it didn't rain there was cloud cover all day for the most part especially early on where Bangladesh wreaked havoc with the ball flicked nicely for a single now these batters they are looking good and of course Elisa Perry she's not getting the movement she was earlier still they are having three fielders in the slip quadrant but I think the batters they have figured out if there's any movement on offering of the pitch and of course this is a very good start for Bangladesh not probably in terms of runs but they haven't lost and wicket end of the sixth Bangladesh 14 for no loss Farzana Hokpinki, plenty of experience for this right-handed opener. She scored 1,000, almost 1,500 runs, high score of 107, average of 27. Again, played on the leg side, but there is a fielder. And her partner, Subhana Mostari, younger than her by nine years 22 years old she's just playing her 13th match and yet to really establish herself a high score of just 23 oh that looked a bit nasty that reared off a very foolish length and the batter she was ready to play off the front foot ended up hitting her arm it seems and immediately the umpire signaling towards the dressing room for the physio the physio is coming out and hopefully it's not something serious for Farzana Hawk she seems she seems all right maybe just a niggle out there yeah you have all these uh, concussion protocols these days so that might be something that they want to check. Well, no wickets lost for Bangladesh. We are into the seventh over. So Tasnim Yusuf, the physio of Bangladesh team, is out there treating Farzana Hogpinki, checking if everything is in place. So Bangladesh haven't lost and we get we're into the seventh over and they would be rather happy with the start not in terms of the run rate but of course if they have wickets in hand they know it's not a very high scoring ground even they could score 220 to 230 they will have a match in hand and they have a very good bowling lineup with some brilliant spinners as well and of course Maru Fakta, the pacer Seems everything's in place for Zana Hogpinki. She is taking guard once again. It's 
faced 24 deliveries already scored only four runs but with each ball she played she looks more comfortable out there Megan shot once again miserly considering only three runs she's into his fourth over once again pulled beautifully it was a bit uppish but it falls safe to no man's land and uh, there will be a single I thought I thought they would go for the second one but they didn't take that risk good use of her wrists to make sure the ball didn't pop up when she played that shot used her and angled her bat accordingly to keep it grounded So they're being very watchful to anything that's on the stumps. Outside it, I even on the offside, they're not looking to play any shots. But if it's short, uh, they are looking to pull or hook. I think it's a good strategy from the opening batters so far. Absolutely. Trying to keep the wickets intact. Megan shoot. She is still operating with the slip. No success in terms of wickets. Bangladesh, of course, they will have Nigar Sultana, Nahida Akhtar, Murshida Khatun to follow. Ritu Muni and Shorna Akhtar can hit some boundaries later on. But they love to see these two bat for a longer period of time. And probably one of them till the end. Will be another wide... Australia have been guilty so far, considering too many extras. Eight on that occasion. Only eight runs of the bat and eight from extras. So split evenly between the b uh, runs from bats and the extras. So once again, once again, straying down the leg side. It will be another wide. Megan shoot probably probably getting frustrated she had very early success in the first game getting for for Zana Hawk Pinky the second ball of the innings dot to end the over after 7 16 for no loss Bangladesh and there will be change up in the com box Let's welcome Shabunnoy Ghosh and Onnesha Ghosh. the ones just joining uh, this is the second one day international of the Australian women's tour of Bangladesh having won the first match by a massive margin Australia women lead the series one win to nil of course so they'll be looking to wrap up the series first bowling change is uh, going to happen Sophie Molyneux is also the only change not only the Australian side but uh, in the entire match however we've got a change we've got an addition in the commentary box also uh, joined by Onnesha Ghosh very warm welcome to Bangladesh thank you very much Shaman Nai and a warm welcome to Sophie Molyneux to the middle as well right on the money first ball she is in red hot form mind you was the player of the final at the Women's Premier League across the border in India. Bowled a superlative seventh over, a triple wicket over, that turned the final on its head. With Smriti Mandana's Royal Challengers Bangalore going on to lift the title. It's been a great few months for Molyneux, who, remember, had to sit on the sidelines for over two years and return to the national side 
earlier this year following a prolonged injury induced layoff first with a stress factor stress fracture in her foot and then a ruptured acl giving nothing away whatsoever to the two right hand batters in shubhana mostari and farzana hawk bowling wicket to wicket so far and alisa heeli the captain who has turned 34 today has set just about the right field placements for the left arm spinner sophie molino that's six deliveries on the trot into the wicket and bangladesh are 17 for 0 after eight overs Pace uh, from one end, spin from the other. Slip remains. It's a good-looking cut shot square of the wicket. But Shubhana Mustari, well, unfortunately for her, could not find the gap. Did not seem happy. It's the eighth over. And we saw introduction of spin. So that uh, happy to operate with pace. Lisa Healy. angled in delivery so bangladesh batters at the moment quite happy to be patient i think that was the or one of the targets they set following the epic collapse they suffered in the first odi at the pre match press conference ahead of the second odi fahima khatun went on to mention that staying in the middle is one of the key targets in the second odi and that's the first wicket for the australian side the finger goes up from vinda rathi and bangladesh lose their opener shobana mostari is walking away but the on field umpire gazi sohel asks her to stay put for a bit a bit of a conversation ensues between Ghazi Sohel and Vrinda Rathi from India I think perhaps she just wants to make sure the front leg is uh, spot on or maybe the catch is uh, taken properly will get to know no doubt the catch seem to have uh, gone into the hands pretty visibly a loud raucous appeal from the australian side and from the initial response of most that it felt like she knew she had nicked it but is that a front foot no ball megan should doesn't quite carry the reputation of being a serial offender with no balls but can shobhana mostri get a little bit of luck in her side early in the innings third umpire tanveer ahmed is hard at work right now and from the looks of it potential one down mushida khatun is ready by the by the boundary to come and join farzana hawk and it has indeed been adjudged out 
Shobhana Mostari has to walk away for a 20 ball 3. Megan Shoot gets the first breakthrough in the ninth over, having continued her spell, her opening spell, which is into its fifth over from the media end. New batter in is the left hand batter Murshida Khatun from the Kushtia district of Khulna. A fair bit of rebuilding has to be done. And remember, Bangladesh are only 17 for 1 in the ninth over. While they are surely taking off one of their targets on the day to bide as much time as possible in the middle, they also need to score runs. Can the left hand, right hand combination pose a little bit of challenge to the Australian attack, which has so far been right on the money, starting with Megan Shute and her fellow pacer, Ellis Perry, and then left arm spinner, Walinu. Guided to Gully, the first ball, left hander, Murshida Khatun, modeled the majority of her batting after somebody from right across the border, fellow left-hand top-order batter, Smriti Mandhana, the vice-captain of the Indian women's cricket team. Moshida did have an opportunity to meet Mandhana during the T20 World Cup in Australia in 2020 happens to be one of the products of the Bangladesh Krira Shikha Pratishthan or BKSP, one of the only female academies in the country for cricket. Not giving anything away to the left-hander is Megan Shoot. <laughs> Bangladesh are 70 for one after nine. Sophie Molyneux will continue loud appeal in the first delivery. Kati Suhail not interested. It's Farzan Hawk Pinky. She's been there for over 30 deliveries and they would expect that she's got her eyes in. She's got to get things moving. She's going to release some pressure of the new batter on the non-striker's end. Sophie Molyneux on the money. Not giving anything away. I think the way the Australian bowlers, particularly Lana King, got some purchase of the wicket in the first ODI. It was pretty evident and one could only I think predict that Sophie Molyneux, unless she was unfit, would be the inclusion in the side, putting their confidence in the spinners in such conditions replaced Kim Garth one of the Pacers one of the Seamers so reduce that and increase the spin option the pitch though pitch number nine being used for the match today has a relatively darker hue and less cracks than the surface used for the opening fixture of the series It's a high stakes series, remember, for it's part of the International Cricket Council Women's Championship Cycle 2022 to 2025. The top five teams in the standings, along with hosts India, will qualify 
directly for the 2025 Women's ODI World Cup. Unsurprisingly, limited overs World Champions Australia are leading the standings right now with Bangladesh ranked 8th behind India. All to play for. Therefore, Bangladesh batters need to bear in mind they have played about 52 dot balls inside the first 10 overs already, amassing just 17 runs so far. Both the left hander in Murshida Khatun and the right hander Farzana Hawk Pinky, the more senior and more experienced campaigner of the two are finding it difficult to penetrate the gaps because the field placement and the efficacy of the Australian fielders give you a sense that there are barely any flashes at a fourth stump line delivery but misses it a quiet sedate start from the Bangladesh team after Nigar Sultana Jyoti, their captain, won the toss and decided to bat, unlike the previous game where her preferred choice was to send Australia in. One pitched towards the leg stump, but deftly intercepted by Phoebe Litchfield, who is absolutely electric nine out of ten times in that particular position. Or hey, wherever you put her up, she's taken a few screamers, blinders in the recent weeks. Not to forget, some during the Australia tour of India in that mid-wicket, short mid-wicket position and also at cover, cover point. Has been earmarked to be one of the superstars of the game is Phoebe Litchfield. Is quite the social media sensation for Australia and world cricket as well. Delivers more often than not on the field and off it. Looks like Megan Schutz's workday with the ball is going to come to an end earlier than expected. She's already into her sixth over. Another one. A runless delivery added to the piling number of dots. The pressure the Australian side has mounted has been absolutely top-notch as you would expect them to. It's the visitors who've dominated the game so far as they have the conditions. It's a Sunday and entrance to the stadium is free of charge. So those of the viewers watching the game on this live stream can consider, especially those in Dhaka, can consider making the drive or a ride on your preferred vehicle of choice to the Sher Bangla National Cricket Stadium in Mirpur. Not every day do you get to see one of the most successful teams, not just in cricketing history, but world sport play on your home turf. It's their first bilateral tour of Bangladesh. Is this series for Australia? Certainly an example to set an example for your daughters, your sisters, 
and maybe your better halves also the ladies who inspire us Sp spin continues to the left handed Mushida Khatun she's bowling over the wickets of Imolinu As Nigar Sultana Jyoti also mentioned before the tournament commenced, and you know they look up to the Australian side. They inspired the Bangladesh players also over the years. They look up to them, and by no means, you know, you also want to put your performance ahead, take that opportunity, and. Uh, Grab it with both hands, prove yourself in the middle. It also gives you a boost, a huge boost in confidence if you can, if you are able to do that. But that again, you know, it's, it's such an inspiration for the likes of Jahanaraz. They've done it in the past. The Jyotis are here now, the Pinkies are there, and the Marufas coming through, the Rabeas coming through, and plenty of them who are watching them. You know, to come forward, there are examples where uh, it was tough for the Bangladesh captain, Nigar Sultana Jyoti, to come through, to follow this, to play the sport. There are stories where Marufa was only given support by her brother. But there are also stories, now rush that one in, we'll skid through inside edge, but no trouble, luckily for the Bangladesh batter. But there are also examples of the Nahidas who were actually given support by the family and they are here at this stage Mushida also in today's world it matters it really matters and as you said on Nesha that not only in the cricketing fraternity but one of the most successful sides in the whole world I hear somebody's mother daughters of course sisters and they lead the way, they wear the national colors, represent the country in the nation and abroad, bring the trophies. Regardless, if you win or lose, you know, it's a matter of pride when you represent the nation. Continue with that after 12, Bangladesh and 19 for 1. And it's time for the second change in bowling on the day. Ashley Gardner. The off spinner will be in operation soon. And speaking of inspiration, the Bangladesh women's cricket team are one unto themselves. They are no pushovers, mind you, no longer also rans. At this very stadium, last year, they pulled off some of the most incredible wins. Just ask Harmanpreet Kaur and her team. And hey, they'll be visiting Bangladesh very soon, next month. A potential five T20I series between Bangladesh women and India women will be held in this very country. Flight of delivery from Ashley Gardner nudged towards the cover fielder, Phoebe Litchfield putting in one of those sprightly dives of hers but is unable to intercept this one. Should be a good contest between the right arm off spinner in Gardner and left hand batter Murshida Khatun. Gardner's posed tons of headaches to tons of left handers in international cricket and franchise cricket over the years. The onus of negating the threat that Ashley Gardner poses will rely largely on the experienced batter, Farzana Hawk. Remember, Farzana Hawk Pinky is Bangladesh's first ever ODI Centurion, having scored her maiden ODI 100 at this very ground. Last year against India, during that famous tied match. Famous? Well, depends on perspective. 
And which side of the border you are on? Will I be allowed entrance back into India? Remains to be seen. Certainly. Not only talk of the town, but talk of the region, at least. And claim that. Yeah, yeah. I'm safe in Bangladesh for now, <laughs> am I not? <laughs> I, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll be safe on both sides. Both sides, certainly. But interesting ploy, and I think if uh, anyone's going to take on Gardner, it has to be Farzana Haq Pinky. Scored another century last year, later in the year, which was in South Africa. So she's got two centuries. Yes, she was the first one for Bangladesh to get a century in the women's circuit, but got two centuries. Now, the off-spinner bowling to her, it's a onside heavy field. But what's good to see is positive captaincy. Now, a bit unorthodox. A mid-off, very close. Very close, very straight, very close, right beside the pitch. In case she wanted to play that on drive or straight pull, ends the over. Very well bowled over by Ashley Gardner. Just the one run conceded in her opening over. It's 20 for 1 after 13. And speaking of centuries and milestones, Parzana Hawk Pinky is certainly inching towards one. A half century of deliveries faced for just five runs scored of them. For Sophie Molyneux, she's the ball to the left handed Mushida. Got a slip and a leg slip. No, she's not willing to give anything away. She's uh, observed that they're not very confident or at least not positive in terms of approach. The Bangladesh batters. So hence, Alisa Healy not willing to compromise in case there are any edges. She wants to make the most of it. And particularly, why not, on her birthday? Certainly. What an asset to the Australian women's cricket history has she been. Started out slow, not so many milestones at the start of her career on the international circuit, but has gone on to establish herself as one of the most destructive batters, one of the finest keepers, and now Australia's full-time captain across formats following the retirement of the legendary Meg Lanning. Tucked away of the back foot. We'll get a single. There is uh, the backward square leg. And certainly, you know, on Nisha, the course of time, you know, she belongs. The re reason I say the course of time, I'll get to that, but she belongs to a cricketing family also. The great Ian Healy being her uncle. And the number of silverware, Alisa Healy herself and her husband share between them, is going to be unrivaled in cricket history, perhaps. Yes, they, I'm sure they did need a separate room or a couple of rooms. Buy a house, <laughs> the Starks. <laughs> Mitchell Stark is playing in the IPL mm -hmm. right now, while Alisa Healy is on national duties here in Bangladesh. Just a couple of hours flight from either way. Time now for a change in commentary after 14 overs with Bangladesh being 22 for 1. It's going to be Shanu Rabbani and Sh Shajat Rahat Hussain. New restarts and immediately a few runs here. Harzana, she's been there for a while now, almost faced half a century of uh, deliveries, and it's important that she makes it count. Mm -hmm. 
hasn't been fluent going for Bangladesh so far. Still a slip in operation. That was a good delivery. Trying to flash hard outside the off stump. Murshida Khatun couldn't connect that on the decision. And heavy offside field within the circle. We can see two short covers along with a backward point and a third man as well. And of course there is a mid-off. So the invitation is there for the batter to get over the top, to go over the top. Only time will tell whether the Bangladeshi batters will try that or not once again. Bowling towards the field, according to the field. And Murshida Khatun, she is struggling as well. Played 18 deliveries for only 4 runs. Packed offside field as you said. No run of the 5th uh, delivery. Ash Gardner, what can we say? She can bat, she can bowl. She's taken 26 wickets in the last year for Australia. The highest wicket taker for the Aussies. Once again beaten. Are a bit we more bounced in this pitch than uh, there was in the first ODI. As the 15th over is done, 23 for 1. So slowish start for the hosts. They've lost one wicket as well. But that of Murshida, Farzana Hawk, she's still there. She's faced exactly 50 deliveries for her seven runs. It's been a hard graft. The Australian bowlers, they really haven't given the Bangladesh batters an inch. Absolutely. Bowling tight lines and lengths. This time going over the top. Is that a chance? Yes, it is. And for Zana Hawk, she departs. That was beautifully bold from Sophie Molino. For Zana, fancying her chances to go over the top, couldn't connect it properly. And Bangladesh in trouble now, losing both openers. For Zana Hawk, Pinky. A sedate innings of 7 from 52 deliveries coming to an end rather softly. Yeah, the pressure was building on her. And I was just talking about the Australian bowlers not giving any loose deliveries. And as a result of which she had to try and manufacture a shot. Sophie Molyneux this time almost darting the ball in instead of giving it flight and uh, letting the ball loop a bit in the air and that just took the outside part of the bat Farzana trying to clear the infield only managing to find the fielder at mid off she went to her left and took a very well judged catch because uh, she was running back and those sort of catches can sometimes be a bit difficult but she knows that this was a disappointing end to all the hard work that she's done and you can see that etched on her face and her body language as she leaves the pitch absolutely first on a hug pinky she never got going uh, played 52 deliveries dot balls after dot balls yes there was Sometimes she was looking comfortable playing dots. That was the problem. I think rotating the strike would have been more helpful towards her cause. But that didn't happen today. And uh, the first drinks break of the innings as well. Allowing players to remain hydrated. Conditions are a bit hotter than they were in the first match.
Sophie Molyneux was the uh, bowler and the player who actually came in as the one change from the Australian team. She replaced Kim Garth and immediately in her fifth over she picks up her wicket. It's been very economical going at less than a run and over 4.2 overs. Just three runs conceded along with two maidens. All the Aussie bowlers, to be very honest, they bowled according to the field to a very tight line and length. Bangladeshi batters, they couldn't pierce the gap, couldn't rotate the strike on regular basis. And that's why the score curd wasn't moving. And uh, look at the score now, 23, only on the board into the 16th over. Nigar Sultana Jyoti. Skipper, of course, one of the most important players for Bangladesh. You can probably say she's the backbone of the middle order of Bangladesh, and Australians will love to see her back to the dressing room early in the innings. Plays it nicely, gets off the mark. Shahjad Nigar Sultana Jyoti, she got a start in the last match but then got bogged down and got run out in a very strange fashion where she didn't plant her bat. And it's been an issue with her. This wasn't the first time she got out like that. This has been an issue that has plagued her previously in her career as well. So that's something she needs to be very wary of and make sure that doesn't happen against the world's best team. It's Mushida. She's now faced 21 deliveries. She's also getting bogged down. Lots of dot balls by the Australian bowlers. They've been on top of things. They've adjusted and acclimatized to the conditions much better in this match. Swept away for a single. There were two slips in place for Mushida. End of the 16th. Bangladesh 25 for 2. So in the last match we saw it being a bit more sticky, the deliveries not having so much carry. This match I think we're seeing a lot more bounce, there's a lot more swing on offer. Although the scorecard hasn't been moving, the ball has, it's done a lot off the surface. Uh, as far as spin is concerned, I'm still not seeing any, any big turn, which we saw in the last game. So it tells me that it's a better wicket, it's a better surface than we saw in the first ODI. And only time will tell what Bangladesh can boast and how much it can challenge. The Australians now, that's straight to the fielder. Murshida Khatun. She saw the room, tried to cut it, but straight to the player at cover point. And she departs after scoring 5 from 24. Bangladesh's misery only increases here. 25 for 3. That was on the Kurds. That really was on the Kurds. Yes, they were trying to keep their wickets intact. But they must, they must had to rotate the strikes take the singles, take the doubles, but they didn't do that. They failed to do that on regular occasions. And of course, the pressure was piling up on themselves. And as a result, third wicket down for Bangladesh. The Australians, of course, no freebies from their side. So let's have a look at the replay. Once again, outside the off stump, we saw a few plays and misses in the previous over this time she connects but goes straight to the backward point Mushida Khatun she won't be very happy with that end to her innings in Australia currently absolutely on top 25 for 3 Bangladesh Sophie Molyneux was the fielder so she took a wicket in the last over and now she's taken a catch to ensure the third wicket also falls
Again, a good delivery by Ash Gardner. As I said, for Australia, she's been fantastic with the ball in the uh, last 12 months. That's now 27 wickets for Ash Gardner. And keep in mind, the player of the match, Alana King in the first ODI, she's yet to come into bowl today. Swept away. Will just be the single. Runs have been hard to come by. The outfield probably a tad slower in this match due to the overnight hailstorm that we had. Yes, agreed with you. It's not a typical Mirpur outfield. We are used to see here. And of course, Bangladesh batters, they have to plan the innings now, how they want to go about it, how they want to approach. Nigar Sultana does a full toss and once again a missed opportunity. Giving dots after dots is no solution to this problem Bangladesh facing at this moment. Maybe rotating the strike on regular occasions would be the order of the day. After 17th, Bangladesh 26 for 3. Not a great looking batting card here. Farzana Hawk 7 from 52. Subhanam Mustari 3 from 20. Moshida Khatun 5 from 24. What it tells us is that the conditions early on was difficult with the fast bowlers bowling in tandem getting plenty of movement off the surface and through the air. But they've lost wickets when it's perhaps looked easier to bat on trying to up the ante. The Aussie bowling has been so good. They haven't found a way. And again, an outside edge, but falls safely to Alana King, who's fielding at point. Sophie Molyneux, she's making this opportunity count. Just five runs conceded from her 5.1 overs. Once again, another dot ball. Not helping Bangladesh's progress in this innings. If we look at the field, we are into the 18th over and only one fielder patrolling the boundary. And that's her right on your screen, filling in the deep square leg region. And that tells you the story of Bangladesh batting ultra defensive they haven't really found a way against the constant threat oh now that looks close and the finger is raised so Nigar Sultana Jyoti she has to walk Sophie Molyneux doing the damage Took a wicket in her previous over and now she's got her second one and that's the captain of the Bangladesh team. She's gone after scoring just one from five deliveries. Bangladesh's uh, scorecard looking worse and worse by the minute. They're now 27 for four. It was a pretty straight-ish delivery. There wasn't much bounce perhaps. The umpire deeming it to be on the money. Now, there's no question about the line. Perhaps height, Shahjad? Um, I don't think so. Nigar Sultana Jyoti, she is not the tallest of the batters out there. And also, she was bending down low. Yeah, it hit it around the uh, above the knee roll. Umpire Ghazi Sohel from Bangladesh officiating as field umpire. And of course, he's a brilliant umpire as well. And some great news from the umpiring world from Bangladesh. Four, four female umpires, of course, 
they have been added to the ICC development panel just yesterday. Four female umpires, Athira Jaki Jesse, Dolly Rani, Chompa Chakma, Rokea Sultana, and of course, Shupriya Rani Das as an ICC match referee. So, congratulations to them. Some good news from umpiring aspect from Bangladesh as well. End of the 18th over, 27 for 4. To Bangladesh's captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti at the toss, she decided to bat first to try and get her batter some confidence back. So far, that has backfired. All the batters out for single digits. And the highest score is the number of extras, nine wides. Faima Khatun looking to score on the leg side. But it's a very smart field set up by the Australian captain, birthday girl, Lisa Healy. Now that's an opportunity to score and finally dragged down. It was short down the leg side. And I believe we have the first boundary of the innings and that too because of extras wides. So, Mr. Extra remains the top scorer in this innings once again. Solidly behind that, Ashley Gardner. If we look at the Aussie bowling figures, almost everyone except Alice Perry, they have an economy around one. Of course, uh, these five wides didn't help this cause swiped nicely swept nicely for one Fahima Khatun of course she is trying to rotate the strike with one of the better batters with better strike rates in this innings So Sophie Molyneux, she's uh, among the wickets coming in and uh, Ash Gardner as well. She's taken one. If the over is completed. In fact, no, we've got one more delivery left because of that wide. 26-year-old Ash Gardner playing in her 68th ODI. That's 84 wickets. In total and finally some runs that two off the outside edge now will that race away to the boundary will we see our first boundary of the day off the bat no we won't excellent effort there we were talking about Sophie Molyneux she does the fielding and great work done there by the 26 year old Sophie Molyneux three more runs added to the total so after 19 overs at 36 for 4. So definitely a good effort there. Seems to have saved a boundary. Yeah, that was that was brilliant filling from Sophie Molinio. Of course, the umpires is having a chat with the TV umpire having a look but uh, I think it's all right I think it's all right yes so Sophie Molinio she is continuing with the ball already picked up two wickets replacing Kim Gert who picked up two wickets herself in the first game yeah they're spoiled for options again some runs just the one though, seems. Ritumoni and uh, Fahima, you have to 
try and repair the damage early on that the Bangladesh top order and middle order have faced. <laughs> Better looking shot, though it won't be for any runs. But what's good to see is that the batters are trying to move their feet, get to the pitch of the ball. I think that's the way to go about things. Now that's played beautifully over the top. That was well connected from Fahima Khatun. And that was a convincing boundary from her bat. Finally, Bangladesh getting a move on. First boundary of the bat. Yes, we have seen a boundary in the previous over. But that was a wide. Going down the pitch. Going down the pitch and going with the full flow of the bat that's a good shot from Fahima so what we're seeing is uh, the batter is now trying to especially Fahima Khatun she's trying to use her feet and as I was saying that it's a good sign the very next delivery she hits it for a boundary now I'm not sure if that's the best option against the, a foolish delivery to try and sweep and anyways she remains after 20 it's 41 for 4 we see 4 bowlers Australia have used Megan Shook with 6 she's taken a wicket only Ellis Perry hasn't managed a wicket she's bowled the least amount of overs as well just the 3 overs uh, Sophie Molyneux for me has been the pick of the bowlers, 7 overs, 10, 2 maidens, and the 2 wickets as well. Ash Gardner, another one, as soon as the spinners have come on. And we still have Alana King left, who was the player of the match in the last game, to bring on her leg spin. And it seems like it will be time for Alana King to have a bowl. Yes. You ordered it, and Alana King is here. Well, they say uh, commentators curse when <laughs> what we say, the exact opposite happens. So far, in the last <laughs> few overs, what I'm saying, exactly <laughs> that's what's been happening. Well, uh, you can... calling it before time. You can say it, commentators curse as well for the fielding team, because you were saying that what Bangladesh should do, and they are taking up your suggestions especially Fahima Khatun now it will be very interesting to see how they negotiate Alana King's leg spins she was the pick of the bowler in the first game conceding only 12 from her 10 overs and started by breaking the partnership between uh, Nigar and Mushida it was probably a 49 run stand and started the downfall of Bangladesh innings slightly misfielded allowing the batters to cross over for a single Alana King uh, she's got an interesting background because she comes from uh, Indian parents and in her family she's got other siblings who play cricket For Lana King, she is adept at other sports as well, along with cricket. But she's decided to take up lake spin, such a rare art and difficult art, and try and master it. And she's been doing a great job. Missed out once again, Fahima. It was a full toss on offering. But she couldn't capitalize on that. Of course, it was well fielded. Short fine leg. Still operating with a sleep. Australia once again. Flighted delivery. End of the 21st over. Three of the Alana Kings first over. And after 21, Bangladesh 44 for 4. And there is a time to change in the com box. Shamunnoy Ghosh and Annesha will be joining you.
Sophie Molyneux continuing give it a bounce um, these this pair they've got a partnership going on I think the key has been at least uh, between Ritu Muni and Fahima that they're rotating the strike this in the previous over where Sophie Molyneux bowled uh, they did a few boundaries first one of the bat also came during this partnership these they're looking positive on Nisha and positivity is what they need right now if they are to up their scoring rate not much to write home about that so far 44 for 4 in the 22nd over are the hosts Sophie Molyneux continues to be economical and effective having got those two key wickets and from the looks of it she'll likely finish her full quota of 10 overs sooner than expected a wide heave of sorts but doesn't connect probably for the good of the batter Bangladesh remain on 44 for 4 after 22 Partnership 17 of 26. The opening stand between Farzan Haq Pinky and Shubhana Mustari was also 17. They took 51 deliveries. Slow the tempo down. Lana King from the media end. Flighted it in the air. It's following the ball but uh, successfully passed the fielder. Did not look very comfortable, not up the middle, as applauded by Elisa Healy from behind the stumps. It's a bit of a dangerous ploy to adopt against Alana King. But they have no other option really. The Bangladesh batters if they are to press the accelerator. A bit of turn there from Alana King who was effective with both bat and ball in the previous game was the player of the match there was a single there there was a single there Ritu Moni not interested Fahima was a bit surprised fight it again much fuller now they're going for a quick single good running between the wickets Lana King, player of the match in the first ODI. Beth Mooney is in the slip cotton. Oh, and that is exactly why. Sharp, sharp turn and bounce. Good take from Alisa Healy. Something pointed out by Vrinda uh, Rathi. I just hope it wasn't a no ball. She did stretch out her right hand, didn't she, Vrinda Rathi? Sweeps, a slog sweep does the trick for Ritu Moni and it will be a much needed four for the Bangladesh team after what has been a disciplined and tight force for deliveries Alana King concedes a four the sweep hasn't been adopted as much as you would expect a subcontinental side batting first on these surfaces what do you think Shaman Nai? they were not very optimistic initially but I think uh, it's a very good over for Bangladesh this one eight runs off it it's 52 for four after 23 
Yeah, Sophie Molino will continue. It's her last over. It's been ninth over. Beg your pardon, it's her ninth over. But only given away 10 runs and picked up two wickets has been the peak pick of the bowler so far but this one was uh, that the one that slides on bit of a confusion yes and no having suffered those three odd run outs in the opening fixture Bangladesh would be mindful of not losing wickets through that mode of dismissal in this game yeah, much slower she slowed it down slowed it down that's where they'll have to be smart and cautious. Flatter goes for the sweep here again. Fielder underneath it gets the wicket. Well, Ritu Moni went for the sweep we were looking for on Nesha. The catch has been taken by Ellis Perry. She made no mistake at the backward square leg and the partnership is broken. Ellis Perry wouldn't miss one of those, one of the most reliable fielders going around, dives forward and safely snaffles that catch. Bangladesh are 52 for 5 in the 24th over. How good has Sophie Molino been playing her first match of the series and has already gotten three wickets to her name. Her inclusion in the Australian side effectively led to the omission of another left arm spinner in Jess Jonathan. And there it is, her third wicket, Elise Alexandra Perry, doing what she does on a routine basis now, taking catches, putting those dives, scoring runs, taking wickets, winning matches, no matter what coloured shot she has on. And yes, lifting trophies. It was a top edge, it was a top edge. Turning away, hit it against the turn. Fuller, much fuller. The block hole by Molyneux. Been a great comeback for Sophie Molyneux into the national side so far. Twin Actually, mixed it up very well. Mixed it up very well, slowed it down at times, darted one in, favorite of turn, it's a wicked maiden for Molyneux, she's done with her ninth, three wickets for ten, off her nine overs, Bangladesh after 24, are 52 for five. Lana King. That was a good start from Megan Schutt and Ellis Perry. Megan Schutt got a wicket. Ellis Perry was economical. Now Lana King. Down the leg. Fielder. Bangladesh in the array. Then the toss. Nigar Sultana Jyoti, the captain, did mention that they want to bat first because they want to give the batters the freedom play their shots score some runs not under scoreboard pressure it's in the air sky that two fielders converging square leg comes running in and takes the catch makes it look easy where it wasn't the easiest and they celebrate as I've managed to take the sixth wicket I think it's Fahima who's making the long walk back And the unraveling continues.
for the Bangladesh women's cricket team here at the Shere Bangla Stadium in Mirpur. The need of the hour, partnerships, are hard to come by as it's proven on the slightly overcast morning in Dhaka. Alana King now gets herself onto the wickets column with the wicket of Fahima Khatun. Went for something was a mix between a sweep and a lofted on drive. She had danced down the track a little bit but skied it well enough for the fielder at deep square leg to run in and snaffle it. Georgia Wareham under that ball the catch is taken and Alana King the fifth bowler to be introduced in the innings has a wicket to her name is a first generation Australian of Indian descent. King's parents come from the southern Indian city of Chennai and they moved to Australia in the 1980s. King herself was born in the Melbourne suburb of Clarinda and grew up as has been the case with most female cricketers around the globe playing cricket mostly with boys. Grew up watching a lot of the late Shane Warren and has bowled a gallery of ripping leg breaks that will surely make the highlights real of her retirement package. Fifty-two for six, still very early days to think of her retirement, still a young career in comparison, 27 ODIs, 22 T20s, I think she's got a fair bit left to do and uh, the action also resembles that of the great leg spin legend Shane Warne, of course from Australia, only two batters in double figures and both of them have come late and are already back in the hut. The two in the crease are yet to open the mark. First delivery of this over, there was an appeal. Molyneux bowling at a stretch onto her last of the quota. Kazi Sohel on field umpire perhaps thought it was going down the leg. But this is good proactive and uh, attacking captaincy. From Alisa Healy, slip is there, four fielders on the off are quite close in. Sharp, quite sharp and steep bounce reared up on the batter, Shorna Akhtar. She's pulled well and I think at times she's uh, darted the ones in and just like this previous one how it rose up on the batter. are the ones that make the batter skeptical whether to go for the strokes or not. They've gone for the sweeps rather late and also been victims of the sweep the last few batters. That's one of the things she does immensely well, Sophie Molino. Mixing up the pace, there was a more flighted delivery on view. That fourth ball off the over. And alters the point of release fairly well as well. Yeah, Fahima Khatun and Ritu Muni when they were in they wanted to take they look to take at least Alana King on at least the intent was there just to get her off the radar. Defended.
straight out of the copy book a maiden over and Sophie Molino bowls out with figures of 3 for 10 as Bangladesh limber on they are 52 for 6 after 15 overs I beg your pardon after 26 overs five bowlers have been used so far it is the spinners have who have done the most damage taking five wickets among them with Sophie Molino the left arm spinner being the pick of the bowlers so far that economy you bowl 10 overs with an economy of one Nana King will continue from the media end flighted delivery outside edge makes her excited with ball goes around the gap they'll get a single if you notice on Nesha right after she's done with her spell it's like the whole team came and congratulated Sophie Molyneux is their professional the acknowledgement is also there you know job not yet done you're here for a work day get through the whole day get the job done and then relax and it's also an acknowledgement I believe of the return of Molino into the national scheme of things after what had been a testing 27 month period she was included in the team in the squad for the home series against South Africa did spectacularly well at the Women's Premier League and here she is steering the ship so to speak for the Australians with the ball taking a three wicket haul in her miserly performance today a stress fracture in the foot followed by an ACL rupture can be very very difficult mentally especially lost her central contact as well but here she is staking a claim to not just the T20 World Cup side for Australia for the world event to be played here in this very country in September October but also perhaps for the ODI World Cup to be played across the border in India in September October again in 2025 end of the over single from it 53 for 6 after 27 Bangladesh have a bit of thinking to do of course in terms of this match you mentioned the World Cup knocking on the door being the home side expectations would be there Bangladesh known to be quite a bit of a challenge at their backyard now Georgia Wareham has taken a good catch now given the ball fighted it in full toss fielding of her own bowling you mentioned the return of Sophie Molyneux also represented RCB women the champion side and so did Georgia Wareham in the recently concluded women's Premier League in India of course one more character you know you speak of returns and you know when, when expect characters because you make it to the side, you first change bowler and you make the most of it. And she did, Sophie Molyneux. One more character that I want to bring up is Taylor Belemink. Right arm fast bowler. Also has been out for some time due to injuries. He's been troubled by that. And also back in the squad. You know, and both these days I've had the privilege of speaking to the captains during the toss and the post match. You know these characters that base of the cricketing system that gives the confidence to the captains stand 
there with you know with a lot of lot of pride but also confidence no matter what the situation completely different circumstances and conditions here in Bangladesh opposing to Australia but because of the resources she has Elisa Healy can be confident say okay I'll bring on my spinners Wareham starts off with a maiden score remains the same 53 for 6 and it's time for change in commentary Sajjad Rahad Hussain and Shanu Rabbani coming on Thank you, Shomunoy and Onmasha. Where am I? It's continuing. No, sorry. Alana King. She is continuing and standing on the same figures she had in the first ODI. 12 for 1. Except that she bowled only 4 overs today. And she had these figures after the end of his ten over, uh, her 10 over spell. Sharna Akhtar finally off the mark in her 15th delivery and then finding some room on the leg side to maneuver it and we talk about Alana King being adept at other sports she was uh, in fact very good at tennis and the sweep and an appeal but probably missing off stump and Alana King she picked up tennis when she was five she was competing for the tennis Victoria pennant which is the largest tennis inter-club representative competition in Australia she was also a ball kid in the women's singles final in the 2011 Australian Open but then she moved and took up cricket and leg spin and because of that LBW appeal the batter Rabia Khan will need a bit of uh, treatment seems to have hurt her hand but as we say this Australian team they have so much talent and so much depth in talent and so many players who have uh, been adept at more than one sport apart from cricket we spoke about the all-time great Miss Elise Perry and how great she is in other sports as well along with cricket and similarly for Alana King she's uh, she's an absolute gem very true and Australia women currently at the top of the women's championship points table of course this series is a part of that winning 11 games out of 16 that's tremendous given their record in the last five years perhaps you expect it where they've lost only four games out of 48 now this time the sweep employed nicely but again some excellent fielding the Australians have been top in the field today not dropping anything not giving away any extra runs saving every single run fighting running tooth and nail for it and making sure that the pressure is constantly applied on Bangladesh good use of the feet excellent but there is a fielder quick single nonetheless better running between the wickets after 29 Bangladesh 56 for 6 It's a sorry looking scorecard for Bangladesh. Farzana Hawk once again failed to impress. Departing for only seven. Played 52 deliveries. Almost every one of them. Shovana Mustari played 20 deliveries for just three runs. Mushida Khatun, 5 of 24. Fahima Khatun tried to accelerate, but she got out as well. Still, 
Australia operating with a slip. We were talking about the women's championship, Shanur. Australia is currently topping that table and Bangladesh is at 7. And every game is important, even though Bangladesh loses this game. Still long way to go. But considering Bangladesh's position at this point of time, Australia seems favourite. But it will be a very important game for Bangladesh the next match as well. Down the track now, that's not been timed at all, and could be another catch. And it is Sharnakhtar departs. Two of 19. It's a simple catch. Georgia Waran gets in amongst the wickets. It's her first one in her second over. Yet to concede a single run. And Bangladesh's scorecard going from bad to worse. 56 for 7 now. She tried to get to the pitch of that delivery, but ended up mishitting it. Difficult batting conditions perhaps, but nonetheless, Young Sharna, the under-19 product, she took a Pfeiffer against South Africa in their T20 international win, the only one Bangladesh have ever won against uh, the South Africa women's outfit, and she'll have to do something with the ball, with the bat, unfortunately. It's not been a good day for the Tigresses. They played across the line. Of course, coming down the pitch, wanting to go over the top. Picked the wrong delivery and also played through the wrong line. That's why top edging it. And it was an easy catch for the fielder. Seven down for Bangladesh. So they are not, things are not looking good for them. And the lower, lower order batting has already been exposed. Australia on top once again. Nahida is the new batter. So as I was saying about the women's championship, of course, this is very important. Outside oh, edge. now the outside edge was induced, but unfortunately it beats first slip. And fortunately for Bangladesh, it goes all the way for a boundary. A rare boundary off the bat. And as I was saying, that Bangladesh have been trying to use their feet. The Bangladesh players, they've been trying to get to the pitch of the ball. On this occasion, it was short and wide enough to cut but again the middle of the bat is not al always hit and another edge was induced after 30 Bangladesh 60 for 7 you look at the bowling card all of the bowlers getting wickets Apart from Elise Perry, she's pulled three overs for 11 without one. Sophie Molyneux came into the team and was absolutely magical with her bowling figures of 10 for 3 off her 10 overs. Really broke the middle order of Bangladesh. And whatever remains of it now, they have to try and survive the next 20 overs. Only three wickets in hand. And we were watching Georgia Wareham. She's she's been really good with the ball. She's from Victoria. And we know another Victorian who's a leg spinner. The late great Shane Warren. Ash Gardner. Quick single. Played onto the onside. Shadow, what should be Bangladesh's strategy from this point of time? And of course, they are in risk of being bowled out before the 50th over. Whatever strategy they had in a place definitely hasn't worked. So, and we were speaking with the coaches, the Bangladesh coaches, early on. They wanted to put up a better show. 
Uh, they were quite disappointed with the first ODI's effort. Oh, now that's another Jaffa from Ash Gardner. Getting it to turn and bounce. It was very full. Nonetheless, it pushed Nahida back on the back foot. This time it's more regulation. She can come onto her front foot and defend. And as far as strategies go, it's very difficult. It's right now to try and survive and see whatever you can take the score to. Given the conditions, I think it's better to bat on than it was in the first match. The sun is out. Oh, sharp turn. Again, we see very sharp turn. And Gardner has been trying something here. She's trying to pitch the ball into those rough patches that we can see in front of the batter. There are some gray patches. And over there, she's getting sharp turn. It's a really good over. Just a single. After 31, 61 for 7. The partnerships, none of them never got going apart from that one of 25 runs between Ritu Moni and Fahima Khatun. Both perishing, playing the slog sweep. Straight to the middle fielder. And Bangladesh they are in risk of being bowled out before the 50th over under 100 as well for the second consecutive time oh now that looks close and the finger goes up Rabe are trying to sweep something very full and played all around it Georgia Wareham gets her second wicket she's been uh, Fantastic with the ball. Rabia, unfortunately for her. It's another tale of a batter trying to get in, struggling and failing to really score much. Just the three from 17 deliveries. It's Bangladesh. It was too full to sweep. In danger of being bowled out yes it was and what we noticed is the Bangladesh batters have uh, tried to sweep against the spinners and it hasn't bared fruit sometimes when you're a batter and you're not really sure of the spin the amount of spin that's when you start playing the sweep and that can sometimes result in a wicket which it has on multiple occasions today Wareham got that last delivery to turn sharply which is why the batter missed it there could be a question whether it would have even missed the stumps but nonetheless the umpire in the Rahi gave that out Sal Sultana Khatun the new batter in and mostly known for her bowling she has to try and salvage some pride for the hosts in their batting flighted once again played with softer hands into the leg side for a single Sultara Khatun getting off the mark in Australia they have two boundary riders in fact, one boundary riders in the deep square lake region and everyone else is within the circle. Beautifully bowled by Georgia Wareham. Lovely to see such, such a great action. And as we were talking about hailing from the same place as uh, the late great Shane Warren from Victoria. 
Dot two and the ball. over. After 32, 62 for 8. Everyone except Alice Perry picking up wickets. Of course, Sophie Molyneux being the pick of the bowlers. And she made the bowling figure of 12 for 1 from 10 overs. Falena King in the first innings look bad. <laughs> Outside edge will be picking up some runs. Going for the second. Outfield is not as fast as we used to see here in Mirpur thanks to the heavy rainfall last night it's quite hot out there and the sign, sun is taking its full effect I think that will help the outfield and I think it's gotten better in the last few overs Sultana Khatun and Nahid Akhtar really have to try and survive the last 17 overs and 4 deliveries. Again, we're seeing sharp turn from the spinners, from the off spinners, from the leg spinners. And they're targeting those uh, rough patches that are in front of the batter that have formed as the match has progressed. Flighted one. Flighted one. Fuller length delivery. Sultana failed to connect. There's an interesting field placement. As we can see, the left of the screen, a silly mid on has been placed. Once again, a dot delivery. I'm not sure about that field placement, actually. Um, and one of the reasons is because the batters simply aren't driving on the onside they've been edging a lot on the offside perhaps using another slip there would be of use and she hasn't really had anything to do in this over so far as 33 overs are done Bangladesh 64 for 8 64 for 8, Bangladesh after 33, still 17 more overs to go, the question is, can they survive? Gardner continuing into her 7th over, interestingly, Shanur, in the first power play we saw two fielders out in the boundary line and after that power play ended, we saw only one fielder and Australia opting to continue with that all through the innings Georgia Wareham look at her bowling figures as well they've been impressive much like Sophie Molyneux 2 for 5 into her fourth over what she's done very well is hit stumps Almost every other delivery is aimed towards the stump, so the batters haven't found any room to really maneuver any shots. Oh, almost went through. Nahid Akhtar. She survives, put her bat down at the very last moment. down the leg side that ran the maiden for Wareham another bowler with an economy of just over one and that's been the feature of the Australian bowling today and she also finishes her overs very quickly now down the track finally using her feet but now that could be very tight it went straight to the fielder at mid on but it seems like 
they won't be going upstairs it'll just be a single so after 34 Bangladesh 66 for 8 let's take a look at that she went down the track it was a good dive it was a good dive but it was tight <laughs> yeah Nahida diving to be safe but how long can they survive still 16 overs to go and Bangladesh have only two wickets in hand the first thing first they have to play the survival game and it's not being very easy against this fantastic Australian bowling lineup you can see what Nahida was trying though she's trying to milk the strike because she knows that she's the more senior partner of the two among her and Sultana she can bat a bit more than Sultana and this time she does just to give the strike to her moves on to 6 from 17 Sultana Khatun now this could be interesting Ash Gardner she's got that slip in place and Sultana charges it hits it well enough it won't go all the way still a few more runs slots we've employed on that occasion the invitation was there to go over the top and of course Su Sultana obliges on that occasion can I take it properly to clear the infield not enough for the boundary though still two runs two very important runs for Bangladesh now that's a white and you can see the change in the field immediately the silly dawn she moves slightly towards her right more like a silly mid wicket short mid wicket still don't agree with that field position Phoebe Litchfield oh now that was tight that was just over the top of Lake Stump I'm not sure why Sultana Khatun decided to shuffle so far across every time you hear a saying the batter should know where the off stump is on that occasion she should have known where the leg stump was she almost lost it trying to play cheeky trying to earn and wide almost almost lost her wicket better better on this occasion by the batter and also the bowler good line from Ash Gardner and well defended by Sultana Khatun another over is done Ash Gardner finishes her seventh 35 over is done and we'll have another change in the com box with the coaches Amnesha and Shomunnoy joining us Wareham, the leg spinner, will continue into her fifth over. The spinners have been very effective after Australia lost the toss for a second straight game. Luck didn't quite go Alisa Healy's way at the toss on her birthday, but her bowling attack have proven up to the task spins and turns prodigiously the third delivery from Georgia Wareham 
Nahida Akhtar is finding it difficult to connect as has been the larger overarching story of the day. This time around she charges down the track and will find a much needed four. They have been hard to come by but that enterprise we saw from Nahida Akhtar using her feet against the leg spinner has brought in good rewards. Bangladesh have well gone past their lowest ODI total but they will want to put up a score greater than the one they had in the chase in the first ODI in an unsuccessful effort 95 is what they were bowled out for and here too they run the risk of another low total unless there is some late sort of a blitzkrieg played by Sultana Khatun and Nahid Akhtar. The batting card paints a sorry picture. Lots of single digit scores. The highest tally coming off the bat of Lexpin bowling all rounder Fahima Khatun at number 5 who scored 11 of 19 balls. Just three batters so far into the double digits and none in the 20s. After Captain Nigar, Sultana Jyoti won the toss and opted to bowl under what was overcast conditions at the time. But right now, we see the sun having made a big bit of, a, bit of an appearance as the teams take a bit of a drinks break after the end of the 36th over with Bangladesh being 74 for 8. Six bowlers used by Alisa Healy. Her spinners doing the heavy lifting having taken eight wickets amongst them. Elise Perry who bowled only one spell taking the new ball with Megan Shoot is the only bowler who remains wicketless. Will we see Elise Perry come back for a second shy with the ball? Perhaps yes, perhaps right after the drinks break or maybe not should Elisa really want to continue with her super effective spin attack. Bangladesh have shown a want of ability in the past two matches to build partnerships. The highest of this game has been just 25 of 36 deliveries for the fifth wicket between Ritumoni and Fahima Khatun. Captain Negar Sultana Jyoti would have expected much more as she said at the toss that she didn't want to put her batters under pressure by choosing to field first for a second straight game which is why she opted to give the ball to the Australians who have shown class, efficacy, precision and discipline of the highest order as you would expect of the world champions and current title holders across the T20 and ODI formats. Spin for the win seems to remain the mantra for success in this innings as off spinner Ashley Gardner comes in to bowl her eighth wicket, her eighth over, I beg your pardon. Could do with a couple of lower order wickets, Ashley Gardner starts one with a wide.
a rare erring of lines on the part of Ash Gardner. Probably been just about right for the left hander, but here she is darting one in full on the seventh or eighth stump line. And Alisa Healy is up to the task with the gloves behind the stumps. Beth Mooney is the slip fielder. Testing lines, plodded her front foot and a straight batted defensive stroke. Can Sultana Khatun show some pluck, which might bring in some luck? For the Bangladeshi tail enders, 75 for 8 in the 37th over are the hosts, and the current partnership is just worth 14 runs. Flighted on middle and leg, nudged straight to Phoebe Litchfield at short mid wicket. More like short mid on is Phoebe Litchfield placed, probably waiting to grab one of those screamers that she's proven to be very good at taking. Ash Gardner, however, persists with the line outside the off stump. That's the end of the 37th over. Bangladesh are 75 for 8. Georgia Verum, the leg spinner will continue from the Thana end or the police station end at the Shere Bangla National Cricket Stadium in Mirpur, Dhaka. Starts with a foolish delivery on the middle and leg stump. Interesting field placement that from Alisa Healy. Lots of yellow inside the circle. Alana King. Cutting that one off. The story of the day, however, has been the return of left arm spinner Sophie Molyneux to the ODI side after 2021. And she's delivered big time with three wickets from her 10 overs for just 10 runs. 53 dots thrown in there. Spectacular figures for the left arm spinner. But just a few days ago lifted the Women's Premier League trophy for and with the Smriti Mandana led Royal Challengers Bangalore in New Delhi at the Arun Jaitley Stadium. She's delivered with the ball as successfully she has delivered on the Australian women's cricket team's social media, belting out Lady Gaga's bad romance. Do give it a listen, though parental discretion may be advised. It's not for the faint-hearted because you might hear a few off-key notes. So good luck with that. But with the ball, Sophie Mal Molyneux has been super-duper effective. As has been her good friend, Georgia Wareham. A common thread between the return of both these spinners into the Australian ranks across the past 12 months has been an ACL injury that plagued both of them at the end of the 38 overs. Bangladesh are 76 for 8 having opted to bat first.
It's in the air. Another opportunity. Went for the spectacular one-handed effort. Lucky on that regard was Nahida Akhtar. Coming around the wicket, making the angle difficult. She's confident is Alisa Healy. Sultana Khatun was her back foot lifted up in the air. Ga Par Ghazi Sohail, square leg umpire. Perhaps has referred it to the TV umpire Tanvir Ahmed. Alisa Healy was confident and with all that experience. What was noticeable was where she carried the ball, almost around her shoulder. She collected the ball around her shoulder, went for the big shot, big back lift. It's the bounce that's noticeable, huge bounce. You see the trajectory of the ball. The ninth wicket is at stake for Bangladesh. If the umpires are checking for the front foot no ball, looks like Ashley Gardner is more than safe and has pocketed her second wicket. And going by the body language of the two batters, looks like Bangladesh have lost one more. In fact, the body language, the confidence of the Aussies, I think, goes on to show that perhaps they have got the wicket, Alisa Healy. Of all the players was uh, particularly very very sure this will tell us yes the back foot crosses the line nothing behind nothing behind not placed just yes, definitely definitely casual careless from the batter Sultana Khatun Lisa Healy she makes the most of it she doesn't make those mistakes good awareness and fast hands and above all, the collection, the collection, don't take it for granted. It's not easy when a spinner is bowling and you're collecting it around your helmet. Does bear testimony to the variable bounce on the surface and something akin to what we saw in the first ODI as well. This, however, is a new surface. Pitch number nine. And the verdict is Bangladesh have lost their ninth wicket for the total of just 77 runs in the 39th over. Sultana Khatun is out for just five runs. And their hopes of a fight back diminish further. 95 is what they had scored chasing in the first ODI. Went on to lose the game by over 110 runs. And here they are, the hosts, after having decided to bat first, struggling at just 77 for 9 in the 39th over. New batter in is fast bowler Marufa Akhtar. Is the last pair in the middle for Bangladesh. 77 for 9 in the 39th over. Here's the scorecard. I think should tell you the story. The Bangladesh batting. 
have struggled. Won the toss, decided to bat first, didn't want pressure. I think it it's the Aussies who have outclassed Bangladesh already. Giving Bangladesh a taste of their own medicine with their spinners spinning a web around the Bangladeshi batting lineup. Spot on. Spot on on this shot. Exactly. Coming around the wicket. Yeah. Giving Bangladesh a taste of their own medicine. Spin trick. Speaking of medicine, we do have a doctor on the commentary panel for the series. Well, I, I hope he's got some cure because Bangladesh needed, especially with the World Cup coming ahead. That's what I think will be concerning the home team's management even more because uh, we'll be hosting a world event that will end the over. 77 for 9. 11 more overs to go. Don't worry about that. They've got only one wicket in hand. Sophie Molyneux definitely, definitely tops the list. Bold in first change. 3 for 10. Couple of wickets among Ash Gardner and Georgia Wareham, who's bowling now is Ash Gardner in for her 10th over outside edge will allow a couple of runs will not worry the Aussies not at all but I think you know, what according to you didn't the Bangladesh batters do right Yep, maybe early on with the new ball you want to be cautious don't want to you know, give away your wickets is it the lack of stroke play then with the Rotation of strike, the lack of rotation of strike in the top order. I think Jyoti was not there for long. The five deliveries. Above all, it's the spinners who were on top and taking nothing away from Megan Shoot either. Down the leg, rare wide. A semblance of over defensiveness on the part of the top order. After they opted to bat first has certainly contributed to the low score we see on the board steps down the pitch but will nudge one straight to the fielder at mid wicket another factor which could be possibly playing on the back of the mind of the Bangladeshis is perhaps the stature the reputation of their opposition world champions Negar Sultana Jyoti did concede that the team looks up to several members of the Australian side and the Australian team at large and has done so conventionally as idols. Are they falling prey to the reputation of the Australian team is the question. Yeah, well, once the results are as such, such questions will arise. I think, you know, when it comes to looking up, as you know players you look up to characters ones with skills I think a lot of them even look up to players from India but they didn't hesitate to give them a run for their money inside out played it well dug it well will be a rare boundary from the youngster yes it will win the race finally Marupakhtar off the mark with a boundary that ends the 40th over. A good boundary against adversity. If your tail ender can play a shot like that, it should give you a sense of what the batting lineup can do if, if they put their skills to good use. I feel they have underplayed themselves mentally a little bit. They have centurions in their side, record makers, led by a confident, self-aware captain in 
Nagar Sultana Jyoti. And anything below 150 is not something you would expect a Bangladeshi side in today's day and age to put up, given their growth in the recent past and the pluck, the courage they have shown against higher ranked opponents in the format, at home especially. Nudged into the leg side. Can she steal a single? She does. Bangladesh inching closer to the three-digit score, which they haven't been able to so far. But bowled out for 95 in the first ODI. Gardner to Akhtar. Not willing to give her any room. Coming around the wicket. The tight angle. The mid-wicket. She now comes. Much squarer. Much straighter. You can see it. Oh! -ho! Just past the outside edge. Living dangerously, Marufa. I believe she's got the guts. Young blood. If she can take her on. If we go to the pitch of the ball. You know it's the last wicket. Much flatter. This one much flatter from Gardner. Pulling a tenth over. Got two wickets. The inability of the Bangladeshi batters to get the ball over the circle has been a key theme of their batting innings. Gardner finishes her allocation of 10 overs for just 22 runs which have brought her two wickets and Bangladesh are 86 for 9 after 41. Eight wickets shared among the four spinners Comes down the wicket to the pitch of the ball and hits it straight. Takes the attack on. Does Nahida Akhtar. The highest wicket taker for Bangladesh. Has a job to do. The vice captain with the bat in hand. Speaking of getting the ball across the circle. Here is one exhibit. Comes of the bat of Nahida Akhtar. Of Georgia Wareham. And this time around, edged, flies between the keeper and first slip, Beth Mooney. Will it trace away for another boundary? It doesn't. Doesn't, doesn't. Lana King covers it. But uh, some rebel, some rebel for, uh, from the Taylanders as they whack for Bangladesh. 92 for 9. Still plenty of overs to go. If they can get to save maybe 120 30 yes you're up against the world champions but you're at home you've got spin also you know it's, it's, it is a game of momentum unorthodox field set by Healy maybe on the face of the batter to cause some trouble flighted and here comes the defensive stroke yes she was playing it straight so I'd say she was playing it straight maybe go hard doesn't matter you're all already on the last wicket. What do you have to lose? Nahida, go for it. She's pitching it up intentionally. She's being cautious, applying cautious. Caution is Nahida Akhtar, 21 of 38. Is the top scorer for Bangladesh so far. Flatter of the back foot was looking for the single. And there I see, I'd like to quote you, as you said, the inability to get it over. The 30 yard circle. Maybe go for it square of the wicket. Cut it. Go hard at it. Hit the ball hard at them. Now she gets the single with soft hands. And will retain the strike. Very good over for Bangladesh against the odds. Seven runs from it. It's 93 for nine after 42. And uh, time for change in commentary. It's going to be Shanur and Sacha.
Thank you so much, Shaman Noy. Bangladesh managing to survive for now. Just the one wicket left. Given the start they had, it was looking very unlikely that they'd make it this far. But it's been the ICC Women's Player of the Month for November, Nahid Akhtar was trying to take this uh, innings towards some semblance of respectability 22 from 40 excellent with the ball she's the leader of the spin attack that's for sure now having to do a job with the bat and Alana King she was exception in the last match she was the player to watch out for exceptional in all facets batting bowling fielding continues no run on this occasion despite the slight misfield the two actors at the crease trying to build a partnership trying to take this score past 100 Shachad that will be some achievement for Bangladesh if they score 100 from the position they were in. And of course, all thanks to Nahida Akhtar. She has been the highest scorer of this inning so far. 22 of 42 deliveries. Australia is still operating with a slip in place. Pushed with softer hands. And for a change, Australia currently are having two fielders out in the boundary line. One in deep square leg and one at mid on. Uh, long on, I beg your pardon. Here's the important thing. Naida, she's played 40 plus deliveries, but she's tried to score the other batters in comparison. Farzana, 7 from 52. Subhana, 3 from 20. Murshida, 5 from 24. They played a lot of uh, deliveries, but never really made use of it in the end Naida once again using her feet getting to the line of the delivery there is turn on offer but it's not vicious yes long on brought back into the circle so back to one fielder patrolling the boundary line and Alana she is fine tuning that fielder more towards her left fly to delivery enticing the batter to go over the top once again a maiden over from the king Alana King after 43 93 for 9 Bangladesh beautiful bowling actions indeed Farzana Subhana Murshida was talking about them you can see in the scorecard, very sorry looking. Nigar Sultana Jyoti, just the one for her today. Faima Khatun, Ritu Moni, they both got starts, couldn't carry on. And it was the spinners in the middle overs Alana King, Sophie Molyneux, Ash Gardner, Georgia Wareham doing the damage. So Marufa Akhtar now has to face the music. If I'm the captain, if I'm the Aussie captain, Alisa Healy, I'm looking at Elise Perry, three overs, 11, no wickets, and Megan shoot, six overs, seven runs, one wicket. Bring one of them up, bring them into the attack, let them face Marufa. Let them bowl to Marufa because against the tail enders, you want your express bowlers bowling. At the stumps, bouncers, Yorkers, try and take that final wicket. Marfa, she's survived 11 deliveries, scored 4. A decent partnership of 16 for the final wicket. Let's see how far they can take it. So far, 8 dot balls on the trot. Make it 9. So Bangladesh 
they have only one wicket in hand so they are not in the luxury of uh, taking some risks maybe using their feet now that's a shot that's a brilliant shot through the covers Maru Faktar wheels her willow gets four we were all bigging up the bowlers and then Marufa displays she can play the proper cricketing shots got to the pitch of that delivery used her front foot and a lovely drive to get to eight her first boundary Georgia Wareham continues a breath of fresh air for Bangladesh watching that shot from the number 11 batter Marufa of course and she survives another over four from this Wareham over for Bangladesh after 44 97 for nine Bangladesh are surviving as our co-commentator on Nisha Ghosh wondering that uh, Bangladesh whether they should have been all out by now given the quality of bowling the lower order is facing 20 run partnership the second highest in this match between the two Akhtars Nahid Akhtar and Maruf Akhtar Nahida back on strike spin to qu continue with Alana King so the two leg spinners bowling in tandem shot but straight to the fielder and there we see it Sutherland makes no mistake an easy catch for her Naida looking to play over the top but there was a fielder set exactly for that shot Absolutely, the fielder was neither at mid on nor long on. She was standing somewhere between those areas and she was placed perfectly for that catch. So, Bangladesh being bowled out for 97, they managed to score two more from their previous score. So, we get of Nahida eventually, the top scorer in this uh, first innings. She goes caught by Annabel Sutherland and uh, there you see it another wicket for King Naida gone for 22 from 47 she had three boundaries in that innings so Bangladesh all out in the 45th over not much to write home about in terms of batting Australia will be very pleased with this bowling attack. Megan shoot six overs, two maidens, seven runs, one wicket. And you look at that scorecard, pretty sorry looking for the hosts. But Sophie Molyneux, she's been the pick of the bowlers. Three wickets in her ten, giving away just ten runs. Ash Gardner with two for 22. Alana King, two for 15. Cleaned up the final wicket. And Georgia Wareham, the other leg spinner, with two for 30. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with the second innings. As we see the partnerships. Nothing really to speak of Ritu Moni and Fahima Khatun. For that fifth wicket, they formed a 25-run partnership. But none of them carrying on. And wickets falling at regular intervals. And that Australia... Well and truly dominated proceedings. The only thing Bangladesh have won so far in this match has been the toss. Other than that, it's been a sorry state of affairs. Australia will need 98 runs to win the second of the three match ODI series and claim the series. They've got 50 overs, 10 wickets in hand.
to keep a bit more distance. Hello and welcome to the mid innings analysis show of the second one day international between Bangladesh and Australia women. I'm Shahnur and I'm joined by Omne Shaghosh. Really happy to have you with us in our com box and also for this analysis. Now, you've seen Bangladesh once again struggle with the bat, but the Aussie bowling, it's been absolutely spot on. Your thoughts on it? Absolutely. Ali Sahili lost a second straight toss in this series on her birthday at that, but things went away thanks to the superb efficacy of her spin attack, which took nine wickets among them starting starting with Sophie Molyneux who was obviously the pick of the bowlers things didn't go the Bangladesh skipper's way after she decided to bat first and the argument she put forth behind uh, deciding to bat first was to not put her batters under pressure in the chase which was quite the case in the first ODI but here too thanks to the efficacy and the precision with which the Australian bowlers bowled on what was a fresh surface, pitch number 9 here at the Sherry Bangla Stadium in Mirpur, Dhaka. Bangladesh bowled out again for a second straight match, this time around scoring two runs more than the first ODI, bowled out for 97 and they were bowled out for inside 36, 37 overs in the first match. Yeah. Here they lasted eight more overs. So slight semblances of positivity to take out of what has been a sorry picture if you look at the scorecard with Nahida Akhtar going on to top score and she's the top scorer having come in at number nine so that does tell your story doesn't it yeah absolutely uh, what Nahida did different from the other batters if let's if we pick up on that is that she tried to convert her start uh, the other batters you know you look at the the openers they played a lot of deliveries but really couldn't get going uh, pinky she played 50 plus deliveries and couldn't score 10 plus runs so that showed how good the Australian bowling was how they used the conditions how much swing was on offer especially for the opening bowlers Elise Perry aside everyone else took wickets and then in the, in the middle overs how their spinners came into attack and uh, especially the two leg spinners bowling together I want to uh, get your opinion on this Australian team and actually when as a as the opposition team when you're facing them how actually can you plan on defeating them they seem almost impossible to beat they have no chinks in their armor for the longest time, they have inspired that kind of fear and intimidation among oppositions, as you rightly mentioned. Given the kind of pedigree they come with, Meg Lanning is no longer their captain, but this is very much a part of that champion side that has gone on to win titles after titles under Meg Lanning. We have the new skipper, full-time skipper for Australia in Alisa Healy, and she too has shown as she did in the tour of uh, during the tour of India in December January they did not drop uh, any series in the limited overs format formats they did go on to lose the one off test but after that even at home against South Africa this Australian side was right on the money and it just shows you no matter what the situation who the skipper so strong is their pipeline and such is the inbuilt confidence and a sense of resilience that is ingrained up in the in the players that when you have players like Sophie Molyneux coming back into the ODI side after 20 a 27 month layoff um, the last time she played an ODI was back in 2021 thanks to two big injuries a stress fracture in the foot followed by an ACL rupture and the Georgia Wareham as well who was superb today with the ball she too had an ACL rupture and came back into the side last year during the T20 World Cup it goes on to show that no matter how adverse the circumstances these players are different gravy altogether they are made of something different that the other lower rank nations want to find and incorporate into their uh, scheme of things absolutely you know you talk about Sophie Molyneux and the pipeline that Australia have uh, the amount of talent that they have uh, in terms of bowling for Bangladesh that is their strength we know the spinners especially Maru Faktar as well she scored a few runs with the bat but with the ball we know what she can do early on she gets it to swing both ways uh, not much to defend what's the way to go about it well 
going by the looks of how effective spin has been on the surface i wouldn't be surprised if nigar sultana jyoti the bangladeshi captain decides to have spin operating from both ends the media end and the thana or the police station end but marufa akhtar can be quite the skiddy customer up top and we still have overcast conditions here at the stadium there was a brief period when the sun peaked out but we can see the clouds hovering again it's quite uh, dark you know going by usual dhaka or kolkata standards neighboring cities that's where i come from uh, i would expect nigar sultana jyoti to go all guns blazing go for the jugular use your spinners the leg spinners especially in uh, fahima khatun who did go for the big runs that 29 ball uh, the 29 run oh, uh, wow. last over that uh, she bowled in the last game with alana king alone carting her for 28 runs i want to see how what kind of a comeback she is able to muster and put forth and one what kind of an answer she is able to deliver in this game i don't expect the australian side to overhaul this target at a canter there will be a few wickets uh, going by the might of bangladesh's spin attack how soon they get it done that is the question and mind you this is the second game australia win this they win the series however it won't be a case of everything being over for the bangladeshi side because this is the icc women's championship series we are talking about every match carries points so even if bangladesh go on to lose worst case scenario this game they will have something to look uh, out for look ahead for and fight for come the third odi because those two points would go on to play a crucial role in deciding the eventuality of their standings on the iwc table and whether they uh, are on that flight to india next year where the 2025 odi world cup will take place yeah, absolutely lots to play for and with this match still not over let's see what the second innings brings us thank you so much anusha for joining us that's it from here in the middle we'll be back with live commentary shortly
Hello and welcome back to the Mirpur Sher Bangla National Cricket Stadium here in Dhaka. The second ODI between Bangladesh and Australia. Part of ICC Women's Championship. Australia lead the series 1 0. They won the first ODI by 118 runs. Australia. Nigar Sultana Jyoti, Bangladesh skipper, winning the toss. Different decision earlier in the morning today. Might have surprised some that she decided to bat first. Reason being, that she wanted her batters to express themselves and not be under any sort of duress. Which wasn't to be, as Bangladesh kept on losing wickets. Initially, they spent quite a bit of time in the middle, but could not convert that time into runs. Managed to compile up a total of 97 in 44.1 overs. Well, they were bundled out. It's a good bowling effort from the world champions. Three wickets for Sophie Molyneux in her comeback match. After a couple of years, Ashley Gardner, two for 22, two for 15. In her 6.1 overs, Alana King, the player of the match in the first ODI, Two for 30 for Georgia Wareham. One for seven runs. Megan Schutt. Ellis Perry bowled only three overs and remained the only bowler without a wicket. Now Alisa Healy and Phoebe Litchfield will be opening the proceedings for Australia. Uh, Bangladesh's top wicket taker, Nahid Akhtar, will be bowling. A slip is in place. As I'm joined by... Sajjad Rahat Hussain in the commentary box. Nahida to Alisa. Straight to the fielder. No runs. Thank you so much, Shaman Noy. And uh, another disappointing batting display from the Bangladesh team. Scoring only 97 today. Adding two more. So the total they had in the first ODI. Of course, Nahida operating with a slip. Bowling on the off stump channel. Three dot balls. But Bangladesh, they need to pick up wickets. Well, Nahida did well with the bat in hand. Top scorer, 22 of 47. But she has a job in her hand to get early wickets. Slight bounce on offer. The fourth delivery of the over. Fourth dot ball. Of course, Bangladesh would love to pile up these dot balls to put pressure on the Aussie batting lineup. And this time she's found the gap. We'll be coming back for a couple as... The Australian skipper, she gets off the mark and uh, opens the score for Australia. Now it was Sultana, Sultana Khatun in the first ODI who got the initial breakthrough for Bangladesh. The initial damage was done through her. Full toss, missed out, Hilly. Dot ball to end the over. After the end of first over, Australia 2 without a loss. Phoebe Litchfield. She'll be on strike. And Sultana Khatun. She'll be operating from the other end. She got the wicket of Lichfield in the first game. Got a golden duck. 
bowled by Sultana Khatun. She would love to repeat that. And Bangladesh badly in need of that early breakthrough. In fact, she got two wickets. Litchfield was one of her victims. So was Ellis Perry, the star. Now she's beginning proceedings. Second over. Operating with a slip. Bowling around the off stamp. Dot ball to start the over. So what do you think? Uh, how the Aussies will approach to this target? Of course, less than 100 runs. Once again, using her feet into the gap. Beautifully driven by Litchfield. The first boundary for the Australians. What a shot that was. Brilliant use of her feet. I think that shot is the perfect answer to your question, Sajjad. This is exactly how they're going to approach it. They're going to be sensible, but they're not going to stay out or prohibit themselves from playing the strokes. Maybe spend a bit of time to get their eye in, but they're such top-class batters that once they're set, they're not going to waste too much time, not going to give their wickets away easily. Down the leg side, should be a wide Will it go for a boundary? No. Wow, brilliant running between the wicket. They ran three. <laughs> they are fast. They are fast between the wickets. So three extra. Four extra. It was a wide. Well, such is their fitness level. They raise the bar high. This Australia. Six-time ODI champions, ODI world champions. Reigning one, of course, at the moment. Well, as of now, not much turn on offer for the Bangladesh spinners. Sultana Khatun having bowled three deliveries so far. Now she'll be bowling to the right-handed Alisa Healy. Deep mid-wicket and deep backward square like the two fielders. Guarding the boundary on the onside. It was stump to stump from Sultana. So, Shamana, one interesting thing. I thought it was a surprising decision from Nigar Sultana Jyoti winning the toss and bat first. Once again, that's brilliantly fielded. Certainly saved a boundary. Definitely saved three runs. Subhana Mustari, the fielder at cover point, diving. Certainly saving three runs. That will end the over. Good over for Australia. Ten runs from the first Sultana over. It's 12 without loss. Nahida will continue from the media end. Bangladesh trying to pick up a wicket. Nahida with the bat. She was the highest scorer of the Bangladesh innings. Flighted. Fielded in the covers. So, Shamunoy, we were talking about the decision from Nikar Sultana Juti. Batting first on this wicket after that heavy rainfall last night see i i understand this being questioned okay yes bangladesh's strength being bangladesh's bowling slightly maybe overcast conditions bit of moisture on the wicket but then again the first odi the bangladesh batting did not succeed not able to score runs and particularly see this this series in fact for both teams not only australia there's a reason why australia is touring bangladesh now is because of the world cup that's knocking on the door to be held here in september october 
this is the reason why India is coming back next month. Similarly, it's also a preparation for the Bangladesh side. And you want to give the batters that confidence and that freedom, that license, that, oh, that's a, that's a gem of a delivery from Nahida. Almost, almost gets the outside part of the bat of Alisa Healy. But, so you want to give them the freedom that go out there and score some runs, hit some strokes. Did not happen. And often, again, is questioned when it doesn't happen out there in the middle. Another over done with some maiden from Nahida Akhtar. 11 for no loss. Bangladesh still looking for the first wicket. Of course, they cannot allow Australian batters to continue for longer. Don't have much on the board. Once again, using her feet, Phoebe Litchfield. Phoebe Litchfield, that uh, tour of India 23-24, the recent one. Was the highest scorer for the Aussies, scoring 260 runs at an average of 86.6. She was uh, immensely successful in that tour for the Australia women's side. She is certainly a batter in form. Sultana managed to take her wicket in the previous ODI, as mentioned earlier. Cramped for space, but guided onto the leg side for a single it will be very interesting to see whether nigar sultana she will be continuing with her spinners on operation or bring her pacer marufa interesting point sajad because usually marufa is given the new ball and what jyoti does is uh, operate pace from one end and spin from the other Comes down the wicket, does Alisa Healy to the pitch of the ball, makes it into a half volley and wings deployed. I think it has gone. No, nope. Gazi Soil says it's a boundary. I thought it's a six. What a hit that was. Using her feet to perfection. Getting to the pitch of the delivery and lifted over the middle fielder. One bounce four. Outside edge, the slip was interested for a brief moment, but it was out of her reach. Fielded by Nahida, but not before the batters crossed the wicket for two runs. It's the lack of bounds that surprised Elisa Healy on this occasion. And lack of turn, beg your pardon, lack of turn and a bit extra bounds that induced the outside edge, but away from the fielder at slip. Once again, going down the wicket. Oh, just out of reach. It was Marufa. She is a brilliant fielder. And she was interested for a moment. Lisa Healy, on that occasion, couldn't connect the ball. So single to end the over after four. Australia, 19 for no loss. Nahida Akhtar will be continuing. She had a maiden over. That was played up Ishli. Didn't carry. See, in the previous over, the last delivery, there was an opportunity. The ball was there in the air for some time. Marufa pedaling backwards. We saw a similar catch being taken during the Bangladesh innings. I think it was Molyneux as confirmed... By her fellow comment, bit of a confusion. Yes or no? Direct hit. It is a direct hit. 
appeal umpire not entirely sure is he going to refer square leg umpire gazi soil he does refer it to the tv umpire tanveer ahmed this direct hit was required there was one now have they got it in time bangladesh absolutely shamunnoy and direct hits are always very interesting so what was that was that out or not out Bangladesh fielders waiting eagerly in anticipation of the first Australian wicket and we are waiting for the replay well it seems very interesting and looks like she is gone she lost her bat seems like her bat was stuck onto the ground shamunnoy yeah yeah she it seems as if she'd lost her bat it got stuck the bottom part got stuck in the ground she carried on with the momentum and there was a direct hit importantly it is it is out i think the batter's walking already the batter's walking already she had lost her bat phoebe lesfield she has to go She's already making that long walk and she has to go for 5. She went for not in the first ODI and she goes for 5 in this one. This is good work. They need such kind of work in the field. The man should take the first wicket Bangladesh. Ah, oh, what an unfortunate way to go. Feeble is filled. She'll be frustrated. with that dismissal she did it she did the right thing trying to drag the bat from outside the crease to get into the crease but unfortunately it stuck onto the ground and bangladesh did their part well a direct hit was required and it was one so the first wicket fall for australia Nahida bowling a maiden over her previous over and now three dot balls on the trot was the arm delivery this one the new batter Alice Perry on strike ample amount of experience one of the stars in that yellow jersey on drive she too didn't get much success with the bat in the first ODI accompanying her skipper Alisa Healy at the non striker's end once again trying to use her feet Alisa Healy but the room wasn't there there to free her arms Naida bowling beautifully once again on the verge of another maiden over and it is a maiden over beautifully bowled by nahida after 5 it's 19 for 1 australia So Bangladesh drew the first blood. Fivilich field once again departed rather cheaply. Slightly unfortunate today, but Bangladesh will take that. Wickets is the name of the game for Bangladesh. If they want to even come close to a win in this game. they have only 97 runs to defend and out of which 
Australia only needs 79 more to get. Should be a piece of cake for Australia. The question is, how difficult can Bangladesh make it for them? Now it's going to be Rabia, the leg spinner, being introduced from the Thana end. Operating with a slip. Dot ball to start the over. Straighter one. Once again, it was coming back with the arm slightly going towards the right hander. Using her feet into the gap, there is protection, the long off region. It was the wrong one again and as you noted, Sajjad, in the previous over that the Australian batters, they're looking to use their feet far more. They're looking to come down the track to the pitch of the ball because there's not much turn on offer, but they're looking to get to the pitch of the ball and then play it, of course. Once again, defended well, Alyssa Hilly. She's looking good. Was the googly again from Rabia? Not sure if she's getting much turn of the conventional one. A a again, came back into the right-handed batter. There is a slip in position. So it's, it's like the other way around. No, not the conventional orthodox delivery is turning it away from the right-handed batter and then the googly that which surprises the batter. She also does not use her wrists. To full effect like typical leg spinners and the ball really skids on to the batter end of another over after six Australia 24 one Nahida continuing. Only two runs considered of her three overs. Keeping one end tight. Reverse swept and hit it beautifully towards the shorter part of the ground. And it rolls over for a boundary. Elise Perry showed her class on that occasion. Yes, it was uh, Alisa Healy, the captain, who's reversed it. Jyoti, her counterpart, has kept a deep backward square leg for the conventional sweep. But to astonish them, she opted for the reverse one and got results. So boundary of the first ball of the over. So there is no scoreboard pressure on the Australians and it seems really an easy task for the Australians at this moment. Certainly in comparison to the first ODI it looks like a better surface to bat on. Oh, ho, ho. And just as I say it. Just as I say it, there is a massive purchase. Slowed it down, length delivery, ideal one. From a left arm spinner to the right hander, massive turn and bounce. Beautifully bold. That would put a lot of doubt into the mind of the batter. Dot ball to end the over. To considering boundary on the first ball. Coming back brilliantly, Nahida. After seven, Australia 24 for one. And a change in the com box up here. Let's welcome Shanu Rabbani and Annesha Ghosh.
Thank you, Shadja. Thank you, Chamunnoy. Australia off to a good start. In chase of 98. Spinners into the attack early for Bangladesh. And Rabea to continue with her leg spin. Down the track comes Elise Perry. And it will be a quick single that she takes. Bangladesh, as you rightfully mentioned during the mid-innings break on Nesha, that they might opt with spin from the beginning, from both ends, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Very much so. It is Bangladesh's strength after all. Again, now this time it's not timed properly. There is a fielder underneath it and what a catch. Nahida makes no mistake. Elise Perry, she has to depart. Alisa. In fact, it's Elisa Healy who's going, the Australian captain, talking about the extra bounce that did her in as she's walking past Elise Perry. And Rabia Khan, she has her first wicket. Bangladesh strike early. Australia, 25 for 2. There was a hail storm last night in Dhaka, but there won't be any Healy storm today on her 34th birthday. For she top edges one as she dances down the track. Nahida Akhtar is having a memorable day on the field. She was Bangladesh's top scorer with the bat. And here she is ensuring there are no slip-ups with the catching, which was a moot point in Bangladesh's 118-run loss in the first ODI. Two batters, both openers back in the hut. Massive wicket for the Tigresses. Getting the captain out early. They would have wanted that. Captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti. She would have wanted to see the back of both the openers. Alisa Healy and Phoebe Litchfield. She's gotten her wish. Still, we know how long this Australian batting order is. Beth Mooney, the next batter in. Uh, joins Ellis Perry. Still to come, Talia McGrath, Ash Gardner, Annabel Sutherland, Georgia Wareham, Sophie Molyneux, Alana King. They can all bat. Beth Mooney, Australia's serious performer under crisis. In danger, dial Beth Mooney. Such is the reputation that she's built over the years. And with the left hand, right hand combination, the efficacy of the spinners might diminish, will it? Driven nicely, but straight to the fielder. Sumaya, one of the uh, substitute fielders on. Fielding at mid-on. And absolutely, as you said, there is a bit of cloud cover right now. It's getting quite dark here at the home of cricket in Bangladesh. As another single is taken, Beth Mooney gets off the mark, played with very soft hands. And nicely along the ground. Bangladesh's leg spinners getting purchase off the surface. And very similar to what Australia did. Bowling it very full, giving the ball flight. Aiming for those rough patches to get the ball to zip through and spin very fast. That is why even when batters have been coming down the ground, they haven't managed to hit it properly. Defended with the straight bat, does Elise Perry. And I think that's a way to go, defending with a straighter bat instead of playing the sweeps. Watchfully played. A successful over for the Tigresses. They get the wicket. Australia after 8, 26 for 2. Anisha, I'd like to 
ask you uh, as Beth Mooney, the new batter, comes onto the crease. You were talking about the left right combination. You know, how much intel and how much info will Australia take from this series leading into the World Cup? Obviously, there's a T20 series later on, and the T20 World Cup will be played here in Bangladesh. Truckloads. There's no doubt about that, Shanur. And one of the reasons you see the timing of this IWC series, followed by the three leg T20I assignment that Australia have, it comes at an opportune time because the first bilateral tour has taken so long as to happen in 2024 in this country. Sultana comes into the attack and Beth Mooney plays it along the ground through the lick side. One more run added. Australia requires 71 now. The required run rate and all of that is not really going to cause any concern. But it also tells you it's perhaps given the start that Bangladesh have had perhaps a bit of a missed opportunity for their batters to score 50, 60 more runs. And we've seen Bangladesh being able to defend totals around those mid-150s, 160s against Pakistan. They made matches tough against India as well with such scores here in Mirpur. So that would have been a par score, one feels. As Sultana continues, not much turn from her on this occasion. And Perry watches it. They don't want to take any extra risks having lost their captain. Oh, now that looks close, but the umpire on that occasion unmoved Vrindarathi. It gripped quite a bit and turned. Did it pitch outside the off stump? There's no DRS available. Played better. It was a bit short there to be pulled. Slightly uppish nonetheless. Another run added to Elise Perry's tally. She's on three of nine. That looked very close on Nesha. Even on replay, it seemed like that might have been hitting the stumps. The appeal wasn't as strong as you'd expect. Sultana continuing. Another dot ball. But wickets need to be in the mind of the captain and the bowlers. The appeal was indeed a bit staggered, coming in installments rather than in, in unison. Could that have played a part in the decision-making of Rindarati? The neutral empire from India. She's quite the trailblazer in her own right. A former Mumbai University pace bowler. Grew up playing in the Maidans of Mumbai and has gone on to achieve quite a few firsts in her umpiring career. Is the first Indian female umpire to officiate in a test match which came about as recently as during England's tour of India in December. As spin continues again, use of the feet. Lise Perry, you get the sense she's living a bit dangerously. She is using her feet, but the bowling has been very good against her. And if she can't get bad on ball after using her feet, there is an opportunity for a stumping. Another good delivery. What I like about what Rabia Khan is doing, especially, is how she's altering the lens, forcing Perry to go back at times, and also eliciting that copybook front foot plodded forward defensive stroke with a straight face of the bat. Yeah, Rabia, not a big turner of uh, the ball, and you can see what she does. Her action is very quick through the air. As we see, 
and not much turn again. So what she's trying to do is get a few of those deliveries to skid through, go a bit straighter onto the stumps. We see a lot of that with uh, the Bangladesh bowlers, the uh, like, uh, left arm off spinners. Sakib Al Hassan has mastered that undercutter. This is leg spin, obviously a different art, but again, you see the ball being straight and aimed towards the top of off. Excellent bowling by Rabia. She's already got no wicket into her third over. And five dot balls in a row. She's trying to build some pressure. Not to be the one to inject commentators' curse in the run of play. But Bangladesh's fielding has been quite good so far. They have intercepted runs in the 30-yard circle. And have oh. taken their catches. On this occasion, though, they don't intercept it. A single is taken off the final delivery. So 10 overs done. Australia 29 for 2. Which you have uh, done, Nonnesha. Yes, the commentator's curse successfully <laughs> injected. Um, but yeah, you think back to this umpire and uh, how she's uh, trailblazed her way. I think it's wonderful for the game of cricket to see women's cricket going from strength to strength with this ODI championship in place as well. The World Cup happening in this part of the world. It'll get more eyes and more people interested as Sultana starts her new over. Again, Elise Perry coming down the wicket. Brinda Rati also happens to be part of the Troika of umpires, female umpires, who made their Ranji Trophy debut in India, the domestic first-class men's tournament. Ah, oh, beautifully year. played. Elise Perry, this time makes no mistake. Gets herself a boundary. Pressure-releasing shot. Australia. Moving ahead. Too short and pulled away with power and authority. Power, precision and Perry. They go hand in hand. Better from the bowler. Elise Perry might be having a bit of a flashback to some of the innings she played recently for the Royal Challengers Bangalore. The eventual champions at the Women's Premier League. The team was in similar spots of bother a number of times throughout the course of the tournament. And it was Perry, who is now the most capped ODI player for Australia, superseding Alex Blackwell, who did the job for RCB. Fantastic from Sultana once again. Beating the bat with her flight. She's very different from Rabia. I think both bowlers, they complement each other. Rabia gets it to skid on. Sultana relies on her flight, tries to get it to turn a bit more. And this pitch, in my pitch report, I said it's a very different looking pitch. It's very unlike your usual Mirpur pitches where it stays low and slow and it's sticky. There's plenty of bounce. Again, that's the wrong one. Sultana finishes the over, conceding the four. 11 overs done. Australia, 33 for two. You were talking about uh, female umpires and five female umpires and match referees have been uh, added to ICC's panel from Bangladesh. Shatira Zaki Jesse, Rokia Sultana, Dolly Rani Sharkar, Champa Chakma have been added to ICC's development panel of umpires as the members from Bangladesh. In addition, Shupriya Rani Dash will be added to ICC International Panel of Match Referees. So this is a big strides being made in women's cricket for Bangladesh as well. Played beautifully. Coming down the wicket, Beth Mooney gets four. Just making sure she evaded the fielder at mid on and got those four runs again not much flight there but straight towards her bat and aimed towards the stumps and 
She gets four runs for that. Again, coming down the wicket, but straight back to the bowler. Was that an opportunity? Rabia, she did the fielding. We might get a better look here. Just landing in front of her. So no cotton bolt opportunity on that occasion. The use of the feet from Beth Mooney is a clear indication that she feels she's had enough of according respect to Bangladesh's spinners. Some sublime timing in that previous four of the first ball of the over. Both batters starting to get set. Beth Mooney, six from eight. Elise Perry, eight from 21. We saw Perry getting a boundary in the last over, punishing the short delivery. Rabia now coming around the wicket again. There might be an opportunity and it's dropped. Marufa, generally a good fielder. That's a second drop in this match. And the fielder was pushed back from mid on to long on after the first boundary. Good captaincy from Nigar Sultana Jyoti. But unfortunately for Bangladesh, the fielding letting them down. And you were talking about the fielding being good so far for Bangladesh. Well, not so much on that occasion. Nigar Sultana Jyoti was on her haunches when that catch went down. Probably memories from that nightmare of a match that proved to be the first game where there were a slew of drop chances, dollies, sitters being shelled. Beth Mooney survives when she should have been well back in the hut by now. More often than not, Mooney ensures that she capitalizes on such reprieves. Bangladesh need to do better in this one aspect. It's been a nagging issue for them across the two matches. Slip in place for Elise Perry. Rabea once again gets her to come down the wicket, but driven very nicely. One more run added to the total. And Mooney dropped on six by Marufa of the bowling of Rabea. How costly will that be? Because both these batters are looking good and looking dangerous chasing a very small total you cannot make those mistakes you cannot drop these chances catches win matches as the saying goes this could have been an opportunity for bangladesh to get back in this game one more run added beth mooney she's looking very comfortable against the spin of rabia now and an expensive over what should have been an over ending in a wicket Ends with seven runs being conceded. And Beth Mooney surviving. Australia 40 for 2 after 12. As has been amply evidenced so far, Beth Mooney is clearly eyeing the mid wicket region. Nigar Sultana Jyoti had. Kind of enough reinforcements there in the form of fielders stationed and the ploy almost came off. But you don't win matches with almosts and what ifs. Yes, you need a lot more cutthroat killer instinct. Something that we resonate with when we talk about Australian cricket, the men's and women's teams. Sultana continues. Oh, now that's an opportunity, and she's stumped. Beth Mooney does not survive long. She's out for eight. Coming down the wicket, trying to get to the pitch of the delivery. Sultana, excellent bowling from her. She gave it flight, but also pitched it short enough so that she had to reach for it, couldn't get bat on ball, and the captain, Nigar Sultana Jyoti, doing the rest, getting her stumped. Beth Mooney gone for 8 from 12. Australia finally losing their third wicket. So the dropped catch by Maru Akhtar not proving to be too costly. They're 39 for 2 now. 3. 
the use of the feet from Beth Mooney, perhaps one time too many for the left hand batter. It does backfire eventually. Australia suddenly find themselves in a bit of uh, a spot of bother, though they don't have a mountain to climb in terms of the target they have to overall to seal this ICC Women's ODI Championship Series against hosts Bangladesh. Perry is pretty strong in the middle, albeit said it by her standards, but such has been the nature of the pitch. Getting runs on the board hasn't been easy. The ball hasn't come on to the ball. The ball hasn't come on to the bat as nicely as the batters would expect. Absolutely, and it's been a difficult but great bowling as well from Bangladesh Sultan on that occasion, realizing that the batter wanted to attack. And Talia Magra, another expressive batter, another aggressive batter coming on. And wow, look at that sharp turn and bounce by Sultana. Excellent. We did see Ashley Gardner elicit similar awkward bounce, high bounce to get one of the tail ending wickets. And here we see the Australia vice captain probably coping one on her chest. First ball, the ball awkwardly turning and bouncing. Absolutely, and uh, that will put a lot of doubt in the batters and their minds, Talia McGrath. And this Australian team, they've been talking about these conditions being extreme. Again, a very good delivery. Now, this is what is going to scare the Aussie batters because the previous delivery did not turn. It went straight through. She's expecting turn. She doesn't get turned. She's not expecting so much bounce. She gets it. So the pitch is starting to play a few tricks and Sultana knows it. She's pitching it up. Again pitched up, but this time it's driven beautifully. Wonderfully done by Talia Magra. Four runs through a glorious cover drive. Threads the gap beautifully, pierces it with power and precision, does Talia Magra, the Australian vice captain. A welcome boundary to relieve some pressure. The momentum might swing with this four. Well driven, powerfully driven. And with that, Australia moved to 44 for three after 13 overs. The difference so far between the two teams, if you look at the scorecard, Elisa Healy, she scored 15 from 29, Phoebe Litchfield 5 from 7, Elise Perry currently on 8 from 26, Beth Mooney 8 from 12. Yes, the Australian batters really haven't scored big, but they haven't taken up as many deliveries as the opening or the top order of Bangladesh did. Again, using her feet, Elise Perry against Rabia Khan and a quick single taken. Perry moving on and moves on to double figures, in fact. 50 more runs in this total. And it would have been very difficult for Australia from here. And what you see the Australians doing very different to how the Bangladeshi batters approached their first 15 to 20 overs was the rotation of strikes. Despite the fall of wickets, the Australians are not chewing up dot balls after dot balls. A good delivery there by Rabia. And absolutely, you have to talk about the Australian bowling. You have to give them credit because they didn't allow any room to Bangladesh to score those runs. They were very good with their bowling. They were aggressive. Again, we see a good line being maintained by Rabia and the Australian bowlers. They did that. And I think where Australia are ahead of Bangladesh in terms of their bowling is their fast bowling unit. Nigar Sultana Jyoti has instead opted to rely largely on a spin attack.
It's been a good over so far from Rabea. Bowling at the new batter, Dahlia McGrath, making her face as many deliveries as possible. The ball hasn't misbehaved in this over like it did in the last one. But nonetheless, Rabia has maintained a very good channel. And that's excellent control, especially when you consider she's a leg spinner. Is there a case for Nigar Sultana Jyoti to consider having a second slip or a slightly widish gully? After 14, it's 45 for 3. Coming to your point of the extra slip, the extra fielder, being more aggressive. I think she ha doesn't have enough runs to play with. So it could backfire even more. One or two big shots and you fall further behind. And Australia have such a massive batting order. They bat all the way down to Alana King. Um, Jyoti needs to think about it, what she wants to do, and the fielders have to back her up as well. Nigar Sultana Jyoti decides to go back to her vice captain, Nahida Akhtar, the highest wicket taker for Bangladesh women in ODIs. Urs in line, first up, fired onto the pads, but will concede no runs. Yeah, dot ball and it's uh, time for a change in com commentary after this over. Naid Akhtar continues again, a very good delivery. Bowling it stump to stump. Not getting much turn. It's really just 53 runs away. Bangladesh really need a few more wickets to be back in this match. The dot balls might build a bit pressure or might have built up pressure if uh, Bangladesh had scored something around 160, 170. Finally, Elise Perry gets another single. Honestly, I'd love to see more players breathing down the necks of both batters. So have them in their eye line, more in the infield. Bangladesh already have their backs to the wall. So why not go for the jugular instead of having a deep square leg where it's unlikely you'll have somebody play that stroke given the line that the Bangladeshi spinners are bowling. Absolutely. I think uh, it's down to Nigar Sultana Jyoti to try and manufacture wickets from here on in. Every run counts. Aida finishes the over with a dot ball. So 15 over is done and it's time for a change in commentary as I welcome Shadjad and Shaman Noy. Thank you so much, Shanur and on Nesha. So Bangladesh picking up three wickets. But Australia, they are looking very comfortable. Short ball pulled away. And it goes for a boundary. You cannot bowl short to Elisa Perry. <coughs> and 50 is up for Australia on the board, 50 for 3. Rabia Khan once again using her feet, Elisa Perry, this time. It has been cut off. So Shomon Noy, one thing our fellow commentators were mentioning about the slowness of the Bangladeshi batters. Yes, they were losing wickets, 
but they failed to rotate the strikes on a regular basis. Whereas Australia, they are doing that thing in spite of losing some early wickets. Pierce the gap, played it off the back foot, crunched it, square of the wicket on the offside. The key to that shot was that she waited for the ball to come on to the bat. She played it late. The Talia McGrath, there it is. Not much footwork. It's just a bit of transfer of the weight onto the back foot and timed it magnificently. Flatter from Rabia, driven, good fielding. Single not there, good understanding between the batters. It's about the intensity. Just saw the boundary in the previous delivery. And somehow, Sajjad, whenever you ask me a question, I think the Aussie batters answer with actions. <laughs> they don't wait for our words to come in. But speaking of the intensity also, our fellow commentators in their stint also mentioned how they were rotating the strike. The looking to score runs. The positive intent. I think that itself, that can be questioned. That what happened there? Were there no... Oh, that's a beautiful delivery appeal. Nothing on it, says Ghazi Sohel. That beat everything. We'll continue this conversation. But what a gem of a delivery this was from Rabia. Wow. Wow. Brilliantly bold. Brilliantly bold. It was flighted. It was drifted to the right-handed batter. And she missed it. Such was the turn. Such was the turn that the wicketkeeper, the captain, with such experience, was not. she was not the only one who was deceived. The batter was deceived. The fielder at slip cotton had to take the ball. Had to collect the ball. Such was the turn. Now, Nahida, the vice captain, starts off with the arm delivery, driven straight. The fielder at mid on. She tried, applauded by the bowler, trying to take advantage. Now, if Nahida can take, can get the ball to turn it away from the right handed batter, one delivery is coming in. She gets, if she extracts a bit of turn also from the surface, that's going to confuse the batters. Went on with the arm. No fielder inside the circle. Square on the onside. Allows the single. Will not. This will not bother the Aussie batters. And again, now the name of the game for Australia is patience. Pick the right deliveries. Pick up boundaries. Go for the singles. Not much left. Below 50 to get. They require 42. And they are doing it smoothly once again. Single on offering for Australia. And we were talking about the partnerships. If we look at the Bangladeshi batters, they had an opening partnership of 17 runs, but they played 51 deliveries. And then a partnership between Farzana and Murshida, a partnership of 6 runs, but they played 41 deliveries. And from then, they always had to chase the game. See, maybe... From the management, it's understandable if they're given the license to go. See, often in both formats, men's and women's both, we tend to criticize the batters if they are not giving themselves time to get their eyes in, to get set. So in that regard, it's fine. You go in the middle, take a few deliveries, but you also need to pick the right deliveries to get the boundaries. If you're not getting the boundaries, the question is, do they have enough to rotate the strike, to find the gaps, to find the singles and the doubles, to put pressure on the opposition, the fielding side? Well bowled over, three singles, 17 done with. The Aussie women are 58 for three.
Australia requiring 41 more to win the match, win the series. Still no pace from Bangladesh. Change in the bowling. Shorna. Shorna Akhtar is into the attack. She will have a slip as well. Quite a number of leg spinners in Bangladesh team. We've seen Rabia, now Shorna, Fahima is there as well, but no pacers. So there is Marufa, who's, who's yet to be given the ball today. If you might argue that with overcast conditions, the hailstorm last night, laps in field, allows the single, direct hit, will not bother Ellis Perry, who made it. To the non-striker's end, of course, in time. So, again, that question arises that, okay, but this side, their strength is the spin bowling. Yes, Marufa is the gem. They rely on her for early wickets. She has got early swing, but they rely heavily on spin. This Bangladesh side. Again, to get back to that discussion we were having, Sajjad, in the previous over, if you bat for 44 or if you go on to the 45th over and the run rate of your entire innings is 2.2, then it's about the approach. Because you were there in the middle. To be honest, I think I saw some proactivity, some optimism from Fahima Khatun and Ritu Moni. But what were their scores? 11 and 10 respectively. Nahida being the highest scorer, 22 of 47. So yes, that can be questioned. Those things, I'm, I'm sure, will come under the radar, come under the, you know, the scanner of the team management themselves. But imagine, imagine being bowled out for 97, you've got early, three early wickets. Right, Bangladesh? Three for 39 in the 13th over. Imagine they were somewhere around 140, 150. Just 40 to 50 more runs. And this happened. Imagine the amount of pressure... The Aussies would be on. Now, she's coming back for the second. This is good running. Direct hit. Yes. Jyoti, the captain with the direct hit, will see the better of the better. Ellis Perry will be guilty. She was adamant to come back for the second and forced Talia McGrath to come. She, it's fair to say that she sacrificed the wicket. It was the Ellis Perry who was determined that she will come back for the second. But what a throw. From the Bangladesh captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti, getting rid of the gloves quickly, collects it, good awareness, and direct hit. Gone. Again, a few more wickets can change the complexion of the game. How quick can Bangladesh do it? Is the question. Well, 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 Talia Magra wasn't interested for the second run at all. As we saw when the Fielder at the deep picked up the ball and threw it towards the striker's end. Both batters were almost at the same end. And Nigar Sultana Jyoti, to be very honest, Amunai, I was thinking that she picked the wrong end. The fielder there, I was thinking that she picked the wrong end, but Nigar Sultana Jyoti. She was aware of the situation and fortunately for her, her throw was bang on target and Bangladesh picked up the fourth wicket. And the players are enjoying a drinks break out there. Australia 60 for 4.
just before the drinks break, Bangladesh picked up the fourth wicket. Australia after 1864-4. Bowling has always been the strength for Bangladesh women team. The batting didn't click so far in this series. In both of the matches, they failed to reach even three-figure marks. Alice Perry, she is out there on 20. Played 34 deliveries. The new batter is Ash Gardner. She was brilliant with the ball today. Two for 22. Now it's time to contribute with the bat. Australia is still in a rather comfortable position. They require only 38 runs, but that really brings me back to your question, Shamunai, that if what if Bangladesh could score 40 more runs? Ifs and buts always remain. We'll continue to do so. Naid Akhtar pose. This is nicely timed, nicely placed by Ashley Gardner to open her mark. Well fielded by Sultana, but See, yes, ifs and buts will be there, then the approach will be questioned, but I think what Bangladesh will be taking notes of and taking from this couple of matches, in fact, I believe this series is that this is in March, late March, again, T20 World Cup in September. Five more months to go. What can you work on in the coming five months? What can you tweak? What can you improve on? What sort of resources do you have at your disposal? A couple of batters, maybe injured, not fit. Maybe you would have preferred them at the top of the order. What's your lineup like? What's your expectations? What's your target? I think the real think tanks will be concerned about that. Yes, short-term targets will be there. Short-term Victories are important to boost your energy, to give you confidence. But I'm sure the goal is the bigger goal. Absolutely. Bangladesh will be hosting the World Cup, T20 World Cup, later this year. And all these big teams coming to this part of the world. Of course, part of Women's Championship as well. But back in my back of mind, they have the preparation as well. See, it's a privilege to wear the national colors, to represent your nations. And it's an honor to play a World Cup. But let, let aside, I think if you're playing the World Cup, representing your home, your country, and that too, you're playing it in your home nation, in your motherland. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I'm sure... The players themselves want to prove a point. They've dreamt of it all their lives. Another single to end the over. Three runs of this Nahid Akhtar over. She's bowled well. But without a wicket, they needed something special. The total on the board being low. 63 for four. Australia required 35 more runs to win. Yes, they still have Perry out there. Shorna will be continuing. Guided for a single towards backwards point. Australia still have 
Sutherland, Wardham in their batting lineup, and of course, how can you forget about Alana King, especially the inning she played in the first ODI, single handedly took the game away from Bangladesh. Heading five sixes, four of them coming from the last over of Fahima Khatun. Yeah. Annabel Sutherland with the 50, 58 of 76, as you mentioned. Flighted was in the air for a bit. And will get a boundary, I believe she does. Ash Gardner, well played and above all, well placed. The outfield gets better with time. The sun is brighter at this moment than the morning. And the outfield is dry. So it, the ball is traveling towards the boundary. Better. Shorna operating with a slip. Bangladesh had Australia in trouble in the first game, 78 for 5. But then Annabelle Sutherland, Georgia Werenham, they had that partnership and Alana King finishing the game off. Another topic of ifs and buts. If you could limit them, if you could send them back quickly, you win the first match, you lead the series, then you have the cushion of losing the second one. But that's what top sides do. Your back's against the wall, even in football. Not Maybe not the most ideal goal. Maybe ricocheted, you didn't intend it, but still a goal and you still come out the winner. That's what top sides do. And that's what the responsible players of the top sides do. Just like what... Ellis Perry is doing in the middle. Yes, one can blame her for one of the runouts, but she'll still take responsibility, be there and try to see the side off over the line. After 20, it's 72 for 4. It's about the margin of errors, number of mistakes. Bangladesh dropping some catches in both of the games. We have seen Marufa with drop catches being one of the better fielders of the side. But from Australia, the error percentage is close to nil. There's the scorecard for Australia. Alice Perry. She is still out there and Australia will feel comfortable seeing her in the middle on 22. Played 36 deliveries and other batters are playing around her. Alyssa Healy started off well. Couldn't make it big, but Australia, they're comfortably placed. See, after 20 overs, right at this stage of the game, Australia when they're 72 for 4, Bangladesh were 37 for 4, which means Australia are 35 runs ahead, having lost the same number of wickets. Again, goes on to show what our fellow commentators were discussing. How the ball... Oh! Outside edge! Just whiskers away from that fielder. In the slip cotton. Good balance. Good balance from Shorna. She saves the boundary. But these are the half chances. Well, ba we'll make Bangladesh wonder. Ifs and Bart's Shamunnoi. Ifs and Bart's story continues. The story of ifs and buts. Fahima was expensive after the final over in the previous game. She is bowling her first in this game. 
tried to show some positive intent with the bat when she was batting out there shamanna we were talking about intent but couldn't couldn't make it big she and ritumoni that partnership really was looking good for bangladesh that's well fielded certainly saved some runs there at least there was some intent but does it make you wonder you know this is the 21st over less than 20 runs just about 20 21 more than just about 20 runs to get so you know why get fahima to bowl now that's because the more wickets they get that's the confidence that's the positives you take out of this game the ifs and buts we've been talking about okay then what did we need to do we need to score 50 more what could have we done to go get that those 50 more that's the fielding you want to see out there regardless of the fact that you don't have a high total on the board that's what you want and that is how you improve and not to forget bangladesh still have one match to go in this series and every game is important if you talk about the women's championship the top 6 will qualify you that's into the gap and finally a valiant effort from the fielder but in vain a boundary to end the over fahima concedes nine in her first it was a bit short and played powerfully Sultana the fielder a deep extra cover valiant effort indeed but nigar sultana jyoti not satisfied with that one especially when you don't have the luxury for big total on the board you need something extraordinary the demands are raised Eighty one for four, Australia. Rabia will be continuing. Punched off the back foot for a single. And we were talking about the women's championship. Shamanna, of course, the top six in their championship table will qualify directly for the World Cup next year in India, the ODI World Cup. India being the host they will be playing directly that leave five more places Bangladesh is currently placed at number 7 so the bottom four of that table they will play the qualifier round but if Bangladesh can manage a win that will help them immensely and where else do you accumulate most of your points you you get them at home in familiar conditions in bangladesh are known to be more dangerous more lethal at home was in the air It's the hands raise again these are not the easiest of conditions and the reason they are the world champions the ladies in yellow is you they go around the world and they dominate they make it look easy regardless of the situation the mighty australians they say both in men's and women's cricket current world champions in all the formats won the T20 World Cup as well defeating South Africa in the final dot ball to end the 22nd Australia 85 for 4 and there will be a change in the com box Onesha Ghosh and Shanu Rabbani will be joining you
Thank you, Shahzad and Shaman Noy. The equation is quite simple. 13 runs needed of just 168 deliveries. Pretty sure the rest of the batting lineup comprising some of the stars of the Australian side won't be needed unless something weird happens against the run of play because both Elise Perry and Ashley Gardner look quite settled in the middle at this point in time. Ashley Gardner, the current holder of the Belinda Clark Award, and Elise Perry, the former holder of the same, out in the middle, steering the chase ahead, and getting the visitors close to a series victory with one game still to go. Yeah, not long left now. Just 11 runs required, Australia. Ash Gardner and Elise Perry, they've both really started to get a move on as Naida continues. Again, we see use of the feet, and I think that's been a massive contributing factor to Australia scoring a lot freely, a lot quicker, because again, spin their footwork, for the most part, it's been assured compared to what Bangladesh did. They, they started to use their feet a lot later Again, we see another example, Perry and Gardner, both of them dealing with the spin very well. And it's about making your starts count. You look at Perry on 31 from 42. Early on in her innings, it wasn't easy for her, but now you can see her batting with a lot more freedom. Agreed totally, it wasn't smooth sailing. We'll get buys, possibly, or did it have some connection with the equipment there. It's been adjudged a wide ball, adding salt to Bangladesh's misery. Are these extras? Nigar Sultana Jyoti is again on her haunches. Is it a physical concern that's bothering her or the state of play that's weighing heavy on her mind? Could Looks like the former. Could be a bit of both, I'd say. But yeah, she seems to have hurt her left hand, one of the fingers there. And they're calling for the physio. Now, just to point out on the number of extras that Bangladesh have uh, given away, just the three leg buys before, this was the first wide in this innings. So compared to Australia, that's one area where Bangladesh have been better. Australia gave 18 wides along with two leg buys. And... Extras were actually the second highest scorer in that innings of 97 or else uh, Bangladesh would have been bundled out for much less. And you look at the batting partnerships for Bangladesh, not much to talk about apart from that 125 and uh, that was between Ritu Muni and Vaima Khatun and then Maru Akhtar and Nahid Akhtar for the last wicket got 20 runs. All of this actually helped Bangladesh post a total which was still way below par on these conditions. Yes, batting hasn't been easy, but it isn't a 97-run pitch. At the pre-match press conference, Annabel Sutherland described the conditions as being extreme, and I quote her, it hasn't been easy getting the runs on the board for either side. And I can tell you with a degree of certainty that watching the match, following the match closely, are the members of the Indian women's cricket team. Because the next team, due to tour the country, are India. They'll be playing a five T20I series in the latter half of April, running all the way to the first week of May. They have some scores to settle here, and of course, some much needed preparation under their belt ahead of the T20 World Cup in September, October. Absolutely. I think it's very important that Bangladesh get all of this experience, use it, and one of the positives for this team under the coaching of Hashan Tilak Ratne is that 
it's a pretty settled squad. It's a pretty settled unit, uh, especially when you look at Jyoti's leadership, Nigar Sultana Jyoti. She's very assured with what she wants to do. And speaking of assured and knowing what to do, I think Elise Perry and Ash Gardner, both of them have looked very comfortable. 30 runs from 27 balls in this partnership. And coming back to Bangladesh, having this uh, settled unit, the results have surprised many. Winning a, an ODI series and a T20I series against Pakistan, drawing an ODI series against India, winning for the first time against South Africa in South African soil in the ODI and in a T20I international. So all of this considered, Bangladesh's women's cricket has been making strides forward that people honestly haven't expected. Nahida, she continues. Nigar Sultana Jyoti, she seems to be fine now. A good delivery, no run off it. Australia edging closer, just seven runs away from victory. Their current partnership is 31 runs, which has surpassed that of the highest partnership that the Bangladeshi batters were able to string together. One of the rare bright spots from today's game that the Bangladeshis would take is the performance of their spinners. It's been a five-prong spin attack that's been deployed so far in the first 23 overs. Australia are 91 for four. And spin bowling coach Dinuka Hetiarachi, who's been tasked with looking after and honing the skills of the spinners in the Bangladeshi side, would be reasonably happy. Their fielding coach, however, might want to have a bit of a speech to give in the dressing room in the debrief of this game. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, now that's a juicy full toss. And it's been put away, but well fielded by Marufa. She's had a mixed day in the field. Dropped catches here and there for Bangladesh. She dropped one of them as well. Two more runs added to the total. At least Perry. Now, if you're choosing a player of the match from Australia, who do you give it to? Sophie Molyneux? Without a shade of doubt. It's an absolute no-brainer. She comes in and wreaks... Havok, though Perry herself has done a decent job in steering the ship, helped in part by some slip-ups in the field, as was on evidence in that delivery. Played off the back foot, a slip-up in the covers. I think that's been a massive difference between the two teams, is how Australia have fielded. Despite calling these conditions extreme, they feel it much better. Down the ground now, there is an opportunity perhaps. No, it just lands between both the fielders. And two more runs added. So the fielder was in place at long off. And there was also a fielder at cover between mid off and cover. So protection there inside the circle and in front of the boundary rope for exactly that shot. Just two needed now and one of them will be taken here. So the scores are level. Australia edging closer towards another victory, another series win. They've lost perhaps a few more wickets than they would have liked. Elise Perry on strike. Eventually the winning runs come off a misfield from Sharna and her own bowling. And Australia win this by six wickets and win the ODI series 2-0. Bangladesh, they had certain moments in the first ODI they had certain moments with the ball in the second ODI but really not enough runs on board 
and Australia come to Bangladesh for the first time for a full bilateral series and they win it with one game left to spare keep in mind all the games will be played here in Mirpur the home of cricket in Bangladesh and after the third ODI there will be three more T20Is to be played here in the same venue a complete all-round effort by the Australians and as has often been the case for Australia the winning runs come off the bat of Elise Perry the most capped ODI batter for the country in women's cricket and a 37 run unbeaten partnership with Ashley Gardner seals the proceedings a crucial IWC series in the bag for the visitors yet another series win under the full-time captaincy of Australia's new skipper Alisa Healy on her birthday her 34th birthday and there's a lot to ponder for the hosts and reflect on ahead of the third game which too will have crucial ICC Women's Championship points up for grabs whether or not they are able to mount a comeback will be something to look forward to absolutely both the teams obviously finishing off the second match will have different vibes in the dressing room Bangladesh will need to work on those areas especially in fielding and batting Australia on the other hand they'll be happier of the two teams So to sum it up for you, Australia, they've won by six wickets. Batting first, Bangladesh put on 97. All out in the 45th over. Nahida with a top score of 22. Sophie Molyneux with three wickets, giving away just 10 runs. Ash Gardner also amongst the wickets, along with Alana King and Georgia Wareham. In reply, Australia's ever-so-reliable, talismanic all-rounder, Ellis Perry, top scoring with 36 not out. She was joined by Ashley Gardner, to finish things off for the visitors. Sultana and Rabe are both amongst the wickets. Nahida, she was economical, but didn't get any wickets herself. Sharna Akhtar as well. There are two runouts in that Australia innings, which is why they lost four wickets. And in the end, it was an easy victory for the indomitable Aussies.
In a short while, we will be joined by Shamunnoy Ghosh for the post-match presentation, along with finding out who the player of the match is.
Welcome to the post-match presentation ceremony of the second ODI between Bangladesh and Australia. Australia have won the match. They've dominated the match and won the series also. They won this match by six wickets and won the ODI series. So congratulations, Australia women's team and commiserations to Bangladesh. Well, uh, let me introduce the presentation party. On my left is the former Bangladesh captain and uh, head of women's wing of the Bangladesh Cricket Board, Mr. Hayu Basha Shuman. It's uh, good to have you on board, sir. And uh, first and foremost, I would like to invite the Bangladesh skipper, Nigar Sultana Jo. Jyoti won the toss, different decision, result not quite in your way. Yeah, I think it was a very uh, good wicket to bat on, but uh, how our batter actually batted today, it was very disappointing uh, because this is not the way we actually play. So I think uh, we should take care of it. Yep. Well, without a doubt, they're the world champions, top side. But w would you like to elaborate on where they did not go right in terms of batting? See, this is not about like we are playing against the top side. This is about like, see, we are not playing on our potential because how we played in the last six months, uh, it was not the uh, exact way how we should play. And uh, uh, we have a very good batting unit, but the thing is, we everyone we call up, nobody are taking responsibility and uh, uh, the, the bat coming, uh, ball coming into the bat so easily, but uh, no one is there to taking that uh, option. And obviously, and I think for top five batter is not when your batter top five batter is not clicking, so it's pretty difficult for the middle order and the lower order to uh, get into the a uh, good total. And the top order seemed to have spent a bit of time in the middle. Was it that hard to get the runs out? See, when you are not getting too much run in the power play, it is really pressuring to, uh, to the others, obviously. They were hanging there, but the thing is the uh, score is not in there. But we think we should work on that and uh, looking forward for that. Yeah, and definitely, you know, ifs and buts will always be there. That's what we were speaking in the commentary box also. You think another 50 runs because you got some breakthroughs and you thought, oh, if we had that and done that. See, whenever a uh, low score match is going on, that way, when you get off three, four wickets, then you said if we could have 20 more runs, 30 more runs, but it actually short and every time it's short. So uh, this is a very good pitch and when, if you get the 200 runs, they will, they will go for it obviously because they have a very, very good learning, uh, batting line. So how they add up uh, the wicket, uh, as a Bangladeshi batter, we should do that. Yeah, definitely. Some from the World Champion ODI to go and a T20 series ahead, all the best. Thank, thank you. The Bangladesh captain. Now, the player of the match, in this uh, second ODI, well, she made a comeback and a comeback worth remembering. And that's how you make a comeback when you're making a comeback to the top notch side. It's so totally new. Three for ten, five maidens. And in her ten overs, the economy was only one run. Very well played. She gets a check of USD 500. Sophie, uh, congratulations and uh, what a comeback. Uh, yeah, no, it was good fun to, to run around out there. Um, yeah, Bangladesh put up a fight and it was hard to take 10 wickets, but um, yeah, it was nice to walk away with a win. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what was going through your mind? You came in first change as a bowler. What was the captain's instructions? What were your plans? Uh, it's both full and straight, I think. Um, yeah, looking at the pitch a couple of days ago, there's a bit of turn in it, and um, yeah, surprisingly there wasn't as much today. But I suppose um, all the spinners did a really good job, um, just sticking to their plans and being able to yeah ask questions of the of the batters every ball. Yeah, speaking of the pitch, and we we really admired how you varied, you know, your pain mentioned when wasn't much. To I suppose that's one thing you have to do when, when there's not a lot of turn or um, much happening in the game is to, to keep changing things up. And I think all the girls, um, all the spinners did that really well for us today, which was good, good to see. I think the leggies bowled a few wrong ones, which is, which is nice, and, and Ash bowled really well as well. You played really well, but just finally, shortly, you know, before... also, even though you've got a lot of experience, how do you prepare yourself for a comeback? Uh, yeah, 
nothing really changes too much. I think I'm just excited to, to get amongst the group again and um, yeah, it's been a really enjoyable time away so far and hopefully that continues. Yep, congratulations, very well played and wish you all the best. So female, the new, the player of the match, the second ODI. It's time for the winning captain, Elisa Healy. Congratulations and uh, if we can have a word. Well, good win. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so, what did you plan it to be this easy? Um, I mean, no. Um, I think the, the Bangladeshi bowlers are still making us work um, uh, from a top order point of view. But I mean, uh, when you get uh, you lose a toss and um, they decide to bat and we start the way that we did, uh, it was obviously a great way. And um, yeah, from then on in, I think we were as clinical as what we needed to be. And what do you reckon was a good, would have been a good total on this sort of surface? Oh, it was a, it was a better batting wicket today. It was a lot drier, less tacky. So um, I think anywhere up over 220, probably 240, 250 would have been a competitive total. But um, yeah, look, they, they put the pressure on with the ball and, and took a few early wickets, which um, put us under the pump. But we've got so much depth with the bat that it's, um, it's a great lineup to be a part of. Yep. And as you mentioned quite, quite modestly that they put you under the pump, but regardless being the world champion, you're expected to go wherever in the world and perform day in, day out. And you have to do it regardless of the conditions, however adverse they may be. Yeah, we do, and uh, we pride ourselves on that. I mean, we've, we've had the opportunity to train out the back here and, and get um, comfortable with some extreme conditions. It's very, very foreign for us in Australia. We're, we're facing a lot of things that we don't normally get to face. So um, from our point of view, it's the perfect timing for that. It's obviously the back end of the season for us and there's a lot of tired bodies around, but the fact that um, all 14 people in the change room want to keep learning, keep growing and um, keep developing their skills is um, full credit to them. Yeah, well, well, I believe it's also nice to win another series and particularly if it's on a birthday, it's a nice gift from the team. But yeah, uh, let you go back. Congratulations and enjoy. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers. That's it uh, for the post-match presentation ceremony. Still one more ODI to go. We'll be back on the 27th and then we follow it up with the T20 series between uh, the world champions Australia and the hosts Bangladesh. Do stay tuned. Do not miss out.
All set for the second ODI here at the Mirpur Sher Bangla National Cricket Stadium. And Nigar Sultana Jyoti, the Bangladesh captain, who's going to toss the coin. Tails. Tails is the call. <laughs> All right, so Bangladesh uh, have won the toss and decided to bat first. Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming you all from Mirpur Sher Bangla National Cricket Stadium in Dhaka with the first ball of the match without scoring a run. So that's the first runs for Bangladesh in this match. Oh! Pace from one end, spin from the other. Slip remains. And that's the first wicket for the Australian side. Taken properly, we'll get to know, no doubt. That there are barely any. They look up to them. But by no means, you know, you also want to bowling tight lines and lengths. This time, going over the top. Is that a chance? Yes, it is. And that just took the outside part of the bat. Farzana trying to clear the infield. What Bangladesh can boast and how much it can challenge. The Australians. Now that's straight to the fielder. So let's have a look at the replay. Once again outside the off stump. We saw a few plays and misses in the previous over. This time she connects but goes straight to the backward point. They haven't really found a way against the constant threat. Oh, now that looks close. And the finger is raised. So Nigar Sultana Jyoti, she has to walk. The umpire deeming it to be on the money. Now, there's no question about the line. Perhaps height, Shajat. Now that's an opportunity to score and finally dragged down. It was short down the leg side. It's 84 wickets in total. And finally some runs. That two off the outside edge. Now will that race away to the boundary? Will we see our first boundary of the day off the bat? No, we won't. Excellent effort there. Now that's played beautifully over the top. That was well connected from Fahima Khatun and that was a convincing boundary from her bat. Finally, Bangladesh getting a move on. Sweeps, a slog sweep, does the trick for Ritu Moni and it will be a much needed four for the Bangladesh team. Flatter goes for the sweep here again. Fielder underneath it, gets the wicket. Doing what she does on a routine basis now taking catches putting those dives scoring runs score some runs not under scoreboard pressure it's in the air sky that two fielders converging square leg comes running in and takes the catch very good at tennis can the sweep and appeal but probably missing every game is important even though bangladesh loses this game still long way to go but down the track now that's not been timed at all and could be another catch and it is Sharnakhtar departs outside oh, edge oh now the outside edge was induced but unfortunately it beats first slip and fortunately for Bangladesh it goes all the way for a boundary Bangladesh have been trying to use their feet the Bangladesh players they've been trying to get to the pitch of the ball on this occasion it was short well for the second consecutive time oh now that looks close and the finger goes up flighted once again played with softer hands into the leg side for a single i think that'll help the outfield and i think it's gotten better in the last few overs and she also finishes her overs very quickly. Now down the track, finally using her feet, but now that could be very tight. Coming around the wicket, making the angle difficult. 
out of all the players was uh, particularly very very sure this will tell us yes the back foot crosses the line inside out played it well dug it well will be a rare boundary from the youngster yes it will win the race finally if your tail ender can play a shot like that it should give you a sense of what the batting lineup can do of georgia wareham and this time around edged flies between the keeper and first lip beth mooney will it trace away for another boundary now that's a shot that's a brilliant shot through the covers maru faktar wheels her willow gets four shot but straight to the fielder absolutely the fielder was neither so we get of nahida eventually the top scorer in this uh, first innings so bangladesh all out in the 45th over once again using her feet into the gap beautifully driven by lichfield once again going down the wicket oh just out of reach it was marufa during the bangladesh innings i think it was molly new as confirmed by her fellow comment bit of a confusion yes or no direct hit it is a direct hit appeal looks like she's gone she lost her bat seems like her bat was stuck onto the ground shomon noy she's already making that long walk and she has to go for five and she goes for five in this one reverse swept and hit it beautifully towards the shorter part of the ground again now this time it's not timed properly there is a fielder underneath it and what a catch there is a bit of cloud cover right now it's getting quite dark here at the home of cricket in bangladesh rabia now coming around the wicket again there might be an opportunity and it's dropped good captaincy from nigar sultana jyoti but unfortunately for bangladesh oh now that's an opportunity and she stumped beth mooney they're 39 for 2 now 3 the use of so the pitch is starting to play a few tricks and sultana knows that she's pitching it up again pitched up but this time it's driven beautifully wonderfully done by talia magra four runs short ball pulled away and it goes for a boundary losing some early wickets pierced the gap played it off the back foot crunched it square of the wicket on the off side imagine there were somewhere around 140 150 just 40 to 50 more runs and this happened imagine the amount of pressure the aussies would be on now she's coming back for the second this is good running direct hit yes jyoti the captain with the direct hit will see the better of the better who was determined that she will come back for the second but what a throw from the bangladesh captain nigar sultana jyoti getting rid of the gloves quickly collects it good awareness and direct hit gone maybe ricochet you didn't intend it but still a goal and you still come out the winner that's what top sides do and that's what how the bang oh outside edge just whiskers away from that fielder in the slip cotton good balance good balance from shorna well ba will make bangladesh wonder if san bats shamon noy if san bats story continues the story of ifs and but and finally a valiant effort from the fielder but in vain they started to use their feet a lot later again we see another example perian gardner both of them dealing with the spin very well 
Down the ground. Now there is an opportunity perhaps. No, it just lands between both the fielders. And two more runs added. Elise Perry on strike. Eventually the winning runs come off a misfield from Sharna and her own bowling. Keep in mind all the games will be played here in Mirpur, the home of cricket in Bangladesh. And after the third ODI, there will be three more T20Is.